everybody, and welcome back to Embers of Autumn. We are on episode 47. New cast member, though. Hi, Lex. You might recognize Lex from the Thursday game. They're joining us now because having an even number is great, as I've noticed <laughs> in the Sunday game. So, hey, split up. 3-3. Three, three. It's great. Uh, anyways, Lex is fun. I'm going to scare Lex, and that's what's fun in life for me. Um... What else? Uh, we have a tilt of links link tree. Uh, where you can find all of our links at Switch, Patreon, YouTube, not Facebook, because Facebook is a cesspool. Um, and uh, our Tiltify page, where we raise money for Color of Change, as well as our Patreon. A lot of fun stuff on the link tree if you want to look at it. Um, that's it for me. Kate. Hey y'all, as you might know, as I've said it before, I have a couple Etsy shots, shops, however, they are currently in vacation mode to uh, strike the company of Etsy for raising their uh, uh, processing fees once again to from 5% uh, to 6.5%, um, so my shops are currently in vacation mode to strike Etsy along with thousands of other follower uh, sellers. Um, their prices just continue to increase each year with no full follow through on the promises they continue to make. That is why we are striking. However, you can uh, DM me on either Twitter, my Instagram, or through Facebook if you would like to purchase any of the items that I produce. These include uh, crochet plushies, custom dice bags, and stickers. Um, you can find, all, uh, as well as uh, crochet custom items like Brittany is holding. Um, you can find all of my socials at Kate Craft Studios US on Instagram and Facebook or uh, underscore Kate underscore Russell underscore at Twitter. Um, and yeah, support small businesses, but not through Etsy right now because a lot of sellers are striking. Back to you, Justin. Okay. All right. Okay. Give me a second. But you can still favorite my shop when it comes back out of vacation mode on April 18th. Do you have other places that we can acquire things? I mean, if you know me personally, you can Venmo me and DM me. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Apologies. Changing notes. Bless, bless a second. It's only this week. Next week, it'll be back to normal. Uh, Sorry to do a sound check live. Can everyone hear me well? Yes. Great. Awesome. Louder, so. Soft. Good. Oh, good. Great. Great. Probably a little louder, actually. So. Last we left off, the Faust and the Furious. <laughs> Yeah, I love the impressed look from the likes. Like, oh, what a nice name! Yeah, that was what that look was. <laughs> that's what I. That's what I interpret it as because it makes me feel good. It was impressed and shocked, <laughs> all in one. They're a family. Uh, the Faust and the Furious uh, continued their investigation of the ancient magical city of Cathatuine and acquired talked to this three-headed toad named Goad, who gave them information on the city and the lockdown that was going around and much other stuff. And yada yada, Headmaster's here to harness the iris and harness all of the weave to do naughty things. And yeah, there's a lot of information gathering and stuff, uh, a lot of exposition. And then they wandered the other districts of the city looking for keystones to access the Undercity. And using said keystones, the party have arrived in the Undercity of Cathatuane, and as they arrived, fought a giant newborn baby abomination that was like part abomination baby, part worm, <laughs> that got stuck from a web from Druk, and was just battered to shit, and it died. And we're gonna pick up right there with it dying, and everyone kind of just in their spot. So Coin would go over and start uh, cutting Nabbert free. 
Okay. With, uh, he'd he'd get, pick up the boomerang and start cutting him free with the boomerang. Okay, and Dax is still uh, like 12 feet tall. <laughs> Pretty sure that spell only lasts for a minute. Yeah, RB's 14 feet tall, and then. Wow, what? I guess we'll need to cut our way through. This thing is large. Uh, hopefully, we don't see anything else. <laughs> Uh, like this is probably not the best thing to see, right? We're making our way down a little. That was decidedly awful. Does anybody, does any, uh, uh, that, wow, bad. I can't even, huh. It does called anyone... me mommy. Oh. Is anyone, uh, is anyone else as freaked out as I am by that? I'm sorry. I'm yeah, still... yeah, that's pretty fucking weird. You see, all right, uh, I'm just, there was a all giant right. baby. You see, Grump it like reminds me of a loogie I saw once in the street. It is, is something that I saw. It had rolled into some hair, and it had, you know, it looked like it was fighting a beetle, <laughs> but it was just, you know, s uh, gross snot and spit that had uh, uh, coalesced. And that is what it reminded me of. You see Grump pull out a little knife and he's like cutting a piece off. Grump, why are you doing that? There's no need for you to be doing that. And starts chewing on the piece. Grump! Oh, why? Right, Dude, Grump. you're better than this. No, I'm not. Do you want some jerky? We got some jerky for you. No, I'm making you, jerky right now, actually. That's not how, no, that's there's a pro no. you don't just, that's not how jerky works. Yeah, you dry it out. And he's like, he like right. smacks it on the wall and like. That's, what, no! Uh, just let him do what he wants, one less. Uh, if I was Jamie rations. Oliver, would you be saying these things? Who the fuck <laughs> is Jamie Oliver? Uh. The Naked Chef, I think. No, that's not him. I say let Grump do their thing. It's fine. If he's a famous uh, chef who comes from the southern hemisphere of this world, nah. he, he'll surprise people in markets and go back to their house and cook a, cook a lot of food with them to surprise their spouses. Um, those of you with a pretty high passive perception, which is Druck and Kenna, you can kind of see the body continuing to undulate <laughs> before it like <laughs> just bursts. Oh. Bursts in what way? Like, like physically or magically? Like like, like, like physically, like <laughs> like a bubble or are we talking like end of Ghostbusters? End of Ghostbusters. Oh, so we're just covered. Uh, no, because Druck and Ven were in the very back end of the corridor, so oh, that's everybody right. but Ven and Druck, everybody but Ven and Druck are just covered. Just <laughs> permission to cover Nabbert's face. Yeah. <laughs> just. <laughs> oh god. That is. Druck will just. Druck will just. I'm coming. Ben. I'm coming. Yes, <laughs> weirdly, I'm coming. Weirdly, it smells like anchovies. But <laughs> uh, glad we're back here, huh? And when, he, when he elbows Ven. <clears throat> yes. All right. Come here, everybody. Grump was like press right up on it, cutting into it. Press digitation. Press digitation. <laughs> press digitation. Press digitation. There was a significant amount of. Please don't hate me for using this word, umami, in that. Oh no. Uh, yeah, yeah. Now that you mention it, I can, I can smell it. Ugh. I'm sorry, I used that word, uh, Dax. I did not mean to remind you. I don't know what makes me feel worse, coin that or, oh, it feels like, out of all my potential, hit points, so to speak, I'm at less than half for some reason, and I can't get it back until a long rest. I guess this is a new type of creature. Do you know? I. What, uh. What. Uh, how did it hurt you? Besides <coughs> scarring me for uh, life, Druck, mentally, that was fucked up. 
Those tentacles just. Ugh. It didn't have tentacles. And I'm it, had, normally... it had boneless arms and tongues. I'm normally fine with long things like that touching me. I'm used to that, but that thing just. <laughs> anyway. <clears throat> oh, Grom's like, oh, hold on a second. And he fishes into one of his packs and you hear like a squelching noise. And he pulls out a bottle that's covered in muck. Here you go. And he hands it to Dax. Uh, thank you, uh, Grump. Um, can I ask what is this? A potion. Concerning. It'll sort you out. Dax is gonna pop cork and then just kind of sniff it. Just it smells like uh, Mountain Dew Baja Blast. Baja Blast. I'll give me a Baja Blast. Clunk, clunk, bitch. It's it's a potion that basically is greater restoration, so your hit points go back to normal. Oh, thank the fuck Lord, there is a god. <clears throat> Which one? I don't. I don't <laughs> care if it's Ubalike, if it's a uh, Hajj, or if it's our Mathlin, or freaking uh, uh, Bahamut. All the bitch. I don't. I do not mean to be rude, but it seems like Bahamut in that uh, assessment was sort of an afterthought. I feel seems like <laughs> kind of rude. I feel like Bahamut would have created Baja Blast though, because like it's kind of part of his name. Yeah. No. It goes Bahamut, down Baja smooth. Baha yes. I understand. Yeah, no. I understand what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. That just that rhymes. That seems like canon. Yeah. Canon. Oh. Baha, Baha Blast was invented by Baha Mut. Yeah. Yes, it was. It comes down. Do you know that in the fall, uh, that actually the snow on Celestia is made of Baha Blast, so that when it goes and melts into the rivers that go down on Mount uh, on the mountains in Celestia, it turns into a floon of Baha Blast, and you, for all of eternity, when you fly with Baha Mut, every time you feel parched, you are you are allowed to to swim in the rivers of Baja Blast. And if and you open your eyes, you can still see through it. It's not, it does not hurt. It does not sting your Mountain eyes. Dew. I love you all, but you see another tremor. Like, there's another tremor. Like, <laughs> All right, we got to go, guys. Let's. There, we got to stop this. Let's go. We really should, yes. Boy, and is that why they call it uh, Morning Dew from the mountains? Yes, that is true. It is the mountains that, so, that uh, give it, it is its... It's dew flavor. Um, it's so, the dew of the so mountains. Just, just it's the so, dew of Mount Celestia. Just so we're all uh, in sync, we're going to have Van try to wrangle this thing if we get there in time. Yeah. Seems to be the plan. And then, yeah, either Van or I. Uh, ideally, Van, because he's much smarter than I am. But uh, either well, of us could I... do it now. I think didn't I forget? Do you, do you have to be trained in the Arcana skill, Justin? Yes. Or okay, must be proficient. This would, yeah. Why am I still talking like this? Out of yeah, I'm not. Weird. I'm not very proficient um, in the magic stuff. But the stairs that this abomination crawled up descend thirty feet uh, as the corridor continues into a T-shaped junction. Uh, the current corridor stretches ahead about 120 feet into darkness, as does the left and right. That said, something catches all of your attention. Hovering about 20 feet up in a shimmering cage of yellow arcane energy is a ceramic bottle sealed with a stopper, brandishing an ancient stylized symbol for air. Uh, around the outside, intricate engravings depict swirling winds and clouds. The ceramic bottle is pristine, yet feels considerably older than it appears. And as soon as you see this force cage, it dispels and the bottle begins to fall. A coin would run up and grab it. Okay. Or try and, try and, try and. <laughs> you grab it and the cork goes. And out pops. <laughs> <clears throat> as you, as you catch it, you kind of fumble with it a little bit, saying that it's a little bit weightier than you expected it to be. Uh, but almost like a swirling mist pulls out um and a slight hiss as if you're you know on uh you know like air pulling through like a tight uh cavern you see materializing before you a short creature standing uh anywhere between three foot to three and a half feet tall uh probably no more than 30-ish pounds wet um 
He has bright green eyes. His skin is fair, though you see touches of pink upon the edges of his ears, the tip of the nose and the cheeks, almost looking as if he's perpetually flustered. His hair is a stylized mess of blue and whites, uh, which continues down to his brows and his chin goatee. Uh, which is also manicured and styled. Upon his head, there is an ornate headband with intricate markings of swirls and snowflakes with an emerald set dead in the center. His attire is far less constrictive, giving him an appearance of maybe an explorer or a delver, as opposed to, uh, yeah, an explorer or a delver. You see strapped to his upper left thigh is a if you're a spellcaster, um, an unconventional looking leather pouch with a bunch of different uh, pockets and straps and doohickeys and such, uh, you can probably point that to be a component pouch, um, along with two daggers. And uh, jewelry wise, you see there are four pieces that kind of pull your attention. On his left ring finger, there is a copper wire ring. You see he has a, on his right, middle finger is a wooden ring that is lined with fur and on the top of it is a painted pair of what look to be nestled white ferrets and he is wearing two necklaces one is a simple chain of silver with a sky blue crystal um, that seems to shift the actual crystal seems to like float a bit as if catching wind though there is no draft or breeze and the other is a simple chain of gold with a marble looks like a marble just like a glass bead i guess you can say with it looks like a almost like a storm cloud or like a shifting cloud seems to be swirling in it um and as he pops out he looks stunned to say the least but his hands are up ah, ah, who are who are you who we're the Fast and the Furious. Who are you? Uh, uh, Flitz. Uh, Tumblepots. Flizz Tumblepots? Flitz. Flitz. Tumblepots. Tumblepots? Yes. Flitz Tumblepots. Mm -hmm. And as he, you say that, he like almost instinctively goes for like a bow, like like a, like a, like a, almost like a curtsy bow, like uh, unsure of how to present himself. Do you know where you are? Uh, yes. Yes. I, uh, traveled here with others. You, mm. you, uh... Have you, have you seen, uh, Mr., uh, have you seen Ogden Boone? Um, no. No. How long were you in a bottle for? But, uh, if I know that spell, uh, what, give or take an hour or so? Yes. So, oh, so not that, oh, so not that long. Fairly short, I was, um, uh, betrayed is the right word. Mm -hmm. What year do you think it is? What, what date is it? I'll tell you what date it is. <clears throat> Yeah, thank you. <laughs> uh, it is Thulden, the 16th of Realmfesk. Thulden, the 16th of Felda. Something, something. <laughs> so, uh, accurate date. This, accurate, yes. Gives it off this, an accurate this day. date. Okay. <laughs> okay, great. All right. So, who did you come down here with? Uh, the headmaster and the council. Whoa. I was handpicked. Why? I'm an archaeologist. Uh, I study uh, ruined cities and... Uh, Ancient uh, unknowns, if you will. Yes, me flits. Uh, so so he puts the I imagine... down. Oh, he Is takes it, it gently from oh. you, and as he okay. takes it, you watch as it kind of shrinks down to almost like a decanter size. Before it was like almost like a like a nice. I guess in your hands, in our hands, it's pretty hefty. Yeah, I was say but it, <laughs> as he takes it from you, it actually shrinks down a little bit to look more like a like something he can like carry. And he'll you see he actually has a strap and he pushes it back and it looks like almost like a map case like a large map case on the back of his then then coin is going to show him the coin on his necklace and spin it around and it turns into a heavy chest on his back that holds party items or anything Just oh he claps yes that is impressive 
Very nice. What is that? Uh, this was made by the three-headed uh, toad we had seen earlier, uh, but uh, we found it not in that same uh, location. It was... Um, I'm sorry, I you said you were with the head uh, master? Y yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And the council. Yes. Well, and his, uh, most of he them. Is certainly the one you. we are currently trying to um, uh, uh, intercept before he does any nastiness. Am I am I off base? Is everybody? That's what we had all. No, that's correct. Yes. Yeah, that's what we're doing. Um, did you know of the headmaster's uh, uh, plot before he trapped you in that uh, vase thing up on the roof? Mm. Is... I was told of uh, this would be part of my sending is to help uh, record and to uh, keep track of different uh, things that we find and study and such and I couldn't pass it up I mean of course you know to graduate all that uh, You're, this is your sending <clears throat> it's <laughs> yes do you you know of the sending Yes, and Ven is wearing. Like, should we actually real quick describe our character? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, we did that. Go ahead. We had one. I, I know what y'all look like. Being yeah. a player, I'm like, yeah, no, no, no. I know what y'all look like. Uh, yeah. So Ven is. Uh, Ven is a middling height, tall to tall to flits because you know medium size, but middling height, green tiefling with uh, like nubs of horns on his forehead that looks like they've been like filed that continuously filed down. Uh, white hair with a receding hairline that looks like it's been grown out a little bit too much and kind of like continuously just pushed over to the side. Uh, big old paunch of a gut hanging over his belt, uh, wearing otherwise fairly just like normal traveling clothes, and then a uh, fairly ornate red cloak uh, with the feathers of the Phoenix House from the Academy uh, around the edge of it that like stands out in stark contrast as like the fanciest thing he has on him. And then uh, also three spell books, uh, on, all visible. <laughs> okay, overcompensating just a little. <laughs> I only one of them is mine. I got the other two. <laughs> uh, only one is mine. We'll just, we're just gonna go in order of the stream layout. So we'll say Kenna's next. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> all right. Um, Kenna is a very just average-looking uh, human humanoid. Um, they, but with like violet eyes, they've got really sh court, short cut hair um, and just uh, your average travel clothes that have been layered over with winter gear um, and a uh, green kit crystal that kind of peeks out of their pack um, as well as a, oh, what else do I have? I need to look at my character sheet. Um, they've got like a light hammer on their hip. They've got like this giant stick that's sharpened on both ends that kind of looks like an oversized porcupine quill um as well as a short bow that has not seen much use um i think any of these have seen you. what are all these no, <laughs> i didn't know you, had, of them, know you had a hammer my actual weapons have seen any yeah, use since the beginning of this adventure um they're wearing uh uh like a bronze amulet with a ruby inside um yeah they they're just very average but there is an aura of nature coming from them. And they have a... Oh, yeah. And they also have a beard, like a full beard. They have a full, like, it's, I think it's like a, like almost six inches long now. Whoa. Uh, it's nowhere near manicured. Um, but it uh, it is filled with beads and amulets um, that seem almost decorative. Uh, but they, yeah, they do have a full beard going on. And their pronouns? Oh, yeah. Their pronouns are they, them. And that'd be coin next. Perfect, thank you. Uh, so coin is actually two foot eight and three quarters, really knocking on two nine. So uh, uh, you see a full uh, chainmail armor that's as clean as you can get chainmail, like really like, but feels a little bit like training gear that wasn't quite meant for him. Uh, but it has it bears the symbol all of his equipment bears the symbol of bahamut the platinum dragon the north wind the being of justice and compassion 
uh, and he's got a helmet with a little it's like a, a visor on you see two horns coming out of it uh, also he has uh, also purple eyes but like lavender ish and his skin is uh, kind of like it looks like a cinder block like how how the uh, like how sometimes you kind of you might trick yourself into thinking that it's a little shinier than you would seem like it's what you might think um what else no yeah and then the coin the 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 trunk that turns into like he put it back and it turns back into a coin on his uh around his neck um oh and a sword uh that you can see that looks like it has um there are sections of it like it's sectioned off like you might see like breaks in the blade a little bit as it goes up there and the hilt is obviously a dragon head uh and then what else oh there's a bear with me named nabbert who Mm. is a celestial bear who has uh platinum claws and platinum teeth i just found him and he (laughs) is my precious baby boy and i will keep him around as long as possible all right uh and that'll bring us to Uh, pronouns oh yeah right and ven's pronouns You're muted. Okay. Me? Yeah, you were. It, oh, it didn't pick up if he said it. Oh, okay. I was like, no, it wasn't. Uh, he, him. Okay. And then that'll bring us to Dax. Dax is this seven foot tall Goliath woman who just looking towards you, just like straight expression, just kind of like, okay. And they have, it's a little bit sh- a little bit unusual for Goliath. You see they kind of have more purple tinted skin and their hair goes down to about their waist and it's pulled down into two very long braids that look like they need to be rebraided after all that shit that just happened with the baby, even though Ben did a great job in prestidigitation. And they have uh, emerald eyes and for their clothing, it looks like their clothes are fashioned off of mind flare um, garbs and you've probably seen it at the academy through because one of the academy heads is an illithid so like you've seen them walking around so you'd kind of get that vibe and it's more a little more flowy so to speak so you can get more action and like battle in and on their hip is a long sword and it has the um engraving of Bahamut because it is not her sword. It was given to her for coin for the meantime. And they are just kind of standing and just kind of looking at you. And pronouns. Uh, she, they. And then Druk. Druk, he, him, standard bugbear. Wears leather armor. Has a crossbow. Yeah. What's his disposition right now? What's his, what would be Druk's disposition? I'll About like how I just explained him. Okay. Like that. Okay. He's just kind of like standing in the back there, uh, like not Fuck really engaging, magic. not really engaging, but uh, like kind of scrutinizing. Like every time you answer, you see him kind of squint his eyes a little bit more. Uh, like he's trying to sniff out any funny business. Uh, Flip would be dumbly unaware of any heavy yep. scrutiny. <laughs> um, yeah, he. I guess you would all. He's. He seems, even though the position that he was in, he doesn't seem to be mad upset so this was something that was done to you you did not do this to yourself oh no 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 i'm uh, not uh, that heavily inclined with magic and uh, you said you are heavily inclined with magic? Uh, not like that no i oh. i wouldn't be able to cast that on my on myself right. So, so do you do book magic, or do you do nature magic, or is it some magic? Uh, of, uh let's see. Magic that comes from a divine source. 
some is uh from within <clears throat> it comes out of me like uh you know just naturally uh then some are gifts yes mm. why do you want to see something i this is i what is i if it, yeah, it, he'll it, he'll hold his his ring up to his his mouth and he'll point at you and he'll whisper it's flits he'll cast message Hmm? See? That is so you said that to me like it was uh, like you were whispering into my ear. Uh, yes. It was not a wholly unpleasant sensation, but it was. Uh, we have heard messages before, but this is that aces sort of a book magic hybrid, I would say. Yes, then. Well, so, yes. I've studied books, but I don't do all that to no point to the three books. <clears throat> this may be an itch. This is maybe, I mean, I, I, I feel like the natural nature of people is to categorize, and I have fallen prey to that myself now. So perhaps it is a magic we have yet to name or don't need to name. It's just flits magic. How about that? <laughs> that sounds I be right as rain. So, um, uh, Flits. Mm -hmm. How much do you know about the moon? The the moon. Um, yeah, you know the one that explodes and reforms every year. That moon. How much do you know about it? DM. Can that's I make extent, a roll? That's the extent of what you know about it. <laughs> yeah. Um, that. What you just said. Are there other things to it? Do you know? Oh, wait, what are your names? <laughs> Silly me. Uh, you are, what was it again? He'll point to Kenna. Uh, my name's Kenna Pashan. You might, if you've ever been in an Indian city, you might have seen my shop. Um, I've kind of been unwillingly voted the voice of the group, though I have no idea why. <clears throat> your voice is soothing. I see it. You're good is at it? it. Yes. Is it really? I, I don't know. <clears throat> I'm from Holly Shower Shire. I've heard some pretty unpleasant voices, so yours is better than most. Mm -hmm. I'll take it as a compliment. And he'll just go down the line. He will <laughs> skip over the two imposing figures at the okay. moment, but he'll essentially go to the little kobold who's shorter than him, which he thinks is the oddest thing ever. Uh, 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 I am Queen Harting. I am honestly kind of shocked you do not know why you are in an ancient city full of magic that is that seems startling but hello. oh no i do know why i'm here i was oh. to study as i said uh, to, to record i heard some things though oh. upon the oh. travels okay i figured it would be rude just to start with that you know that is yes it is also uh rude of us to be so cagey I'd say, but also well, at the he same points time, to the open air where he was. <laughs> yes, this is a strange way. That's why I asked why you seem so. And Flitz, uh, you did see the wait, well, eh, you eh, you probably wouldn't have been super aware, uh, but you do see the the gunk that's like coating the corridor up the stairs. I'll comment on that later. Uh, you, you with the, the phoenix feathers. That's interesting. Uh, oh, yes. Um, I spent some time at the academy. And he'll, you watch as he, he holds his hand up, but he, um, lifts up his shirt a bit. Like, it looks like it's almost folded down. And you see, um, essentially it would be like a, like a large, it kind of looked like a, like a, <laughs> kind of like a muffin top a little bit that he had but you see now it is actually like a similar red cloak that he has tied around and there are uh feathers that are kind of buried up in it but he kind of like undoes it a bit classmates <laughs> uh, sort of. yes yes uh more or less they didn't have anything related to air which i find very disappointing but you know Birds, phoenix, fly, you just, you roll with it. I, I suppose, yes. 
And your name is? Uh, Ven. Ven Kihalas. Uh, Flitz, make a... Uh, nah. Okay. <laughs> Great. Did you know Tranquil Page by any chance while you were there? Uh, Damn, did I know this person? Probably, yeah. Okay. I have a list of people that I do know <laughs> off the top mm -hmm. of my head. <laughs> you do, yeah. I don't. I didn't think of that one. Yeah. Okay. Because. She's the, yeah, she was in Phoenix House, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the one that gave me the cloak, yeah. Well, um. Why, is she uh, your friend? Um, uh, more or less, yes. Um, oh, my Main friends. teacher, well, no, oh. uh, just my main teacher while I was at the academy. That's less fun, but I understand. <clears throat> your, your bodyguards hired fighters to look to the bugbear and the goliath woman oh then we should just find out uh, how many people and what type of people he was with i'm right um, here you can speak to me and uh i'm grump if and if he knows about the magic thing that we need to with. I absolutely love to. However, I just feel like I missed a bunch of what was just said because it was as if I was detached from reality for a second. I, I think that he wanted you to, to inquire about what I know regarding magic. I know a lot about magic. Um, this is the specific one. What is, what is happening is we were in a hot uh, pursuit mm -hmm. and then we had to fight a huge loogie baby worm. And then after we dispatched the baby worm, uh, then we ran into your bottle and uh, I caught it and we were wondering uh, if you know, other than you've said you're, you're sending, you've been trying to document and catalog, okay, yes. But you have been hanging out with lots of people who we suspect are trying to do not so cool things. So it seems a little weird that you would be so pretty frankly, here. pretty chill. We are down here to stop the Archmage from doing something stupid. And harnessing the magic did... within the iris. Is that what you're mm -hmm. referring to? Yes. Yeah, that is that is exactly okay. It's not that bad. What do you <laughs> they mm. talked about it as if it was nothing. It can be yes. that bad, can it? The I um you... uh the mm. if you interfere with it, I will put this and he holds up a crossbow bolt to your head. Uh, pr uh maybe okay. we should explain things first, real quick. Um what did they tell you about the iris? Well, it wasn't much. See, you know, um, being in a place like this with a person of my disposition, I tend to get lost in my own thoughts, thinking about all what could have been happening around here. Oh, you know, well, sometimes I, you know, hear a word or two, something I catches my attention, and I listen in. And I think they brought me along because I could be a little dense in that department. But I did hear couple things the iris which what it holds the weave or something the entire thing yes right yeah uh, we've been made aware of it situation that that there is was going to be a reunion so i think we're meeting other people there um <laughs> and something about the school being able to distribute who gets what magic when which you know is a uh, I don't know how I really feel about that. And I think they kind of caught on to that. So they, you know, boop. The, so the, 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 when they say that the, the iris is, is it holds the weed, the, the iris is the source of all magic in the world. What about magic that is from a different plane? Absolutely all of it. It is the source of all, it, 
It is the source of the other planes as well. Yeah. Like, if, if it ceases to exist, everyone that has ever been affected by magic immediately to reverts to the time before they were first affected by magic. Um, and that could mean dying immediately or just not being able to use magic if they used to be able to use magic. Um, like, I couldn't talk to the animals anymore. No, you cannot talk to the animals. If you've ever been healed, you would immediately take all the damage that you've ever been healed for. Um which could probably kill you, like in most of our uh, situations. Um, you in addition, to... yes. Yeah, in addition. There's, there's a lot of bad things if the uh, headmaster tries to take over the weave. In, in addition to that, um, the uh, uh, we believe that what he's been telling people is that uh, he wants to you take it over and use it so that it can be... Uh, so that the academy can decide who can and can't use magic, which would be basically the entire, not only within an undeal, but within the entire planet and the multi, the, the, the universe as well. Um, but you, you mentioned a reunion, which is a very troubling term, which confirms several of our suspicions, uh, because that's a term that has been used by a cult of an evil, deity-esque evil being that wants to see the end of all life, I believe, uh, and resides within the moon. Which is why I asked you earlier. Yes, so we had, like, a really uh, sort of uh, come to Bahamut, very tense conversation, like, roughly... With him? No, just with us, around our, our oh, the, the team. We haven't actually found him yet. So now you have uh, joined this conversation we had thought we had completed that loop but now we have added you in and now we are saying that that is why we've got some real physical immediate tense threats and also we're not sure how to trust you because we also if I'm being honest uh, don't like the company you had kept obviously until now so what if I do this? And he takes off his necklace, the um, the gold one that has the marble. It was a gift to me from uh, I don't want to say employer, but that's a good way to say it. Um, who blessed me with some of my gifts. What if I give this to you? It's one of my most prized talismans that I hold. Um, and that could be your collateral. Yeah, I mean, do you mean employer in the sense that the headmaster is your employer for this journey? No, this is the one that gave me my. Then I feel like bottle. you should keep it if it's not. No, 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 no. It's collateral. You want to I'll trust me here? It. You take it. Okay. He gives it to. He. He flicks his hand and he watches it. It, it almost looks like when, like a wind kind of pulls on his hand and you watch this like spectral hand it's a mage hand but it looks almost like it's made of wind and air and it picks up the marble and it brings it to you drug so you have um his talisman <laughs> uh, oh, no. so you can do some fun things with that i'm pretty sure uh so yeah, I'm gonna delete that up for you because, uh, yeah. So as long as you have it on your possession, you can add a D4 to um, turn an ability check into from a success or potentially a failure or failure to a success. So you, it's like a bless, but only for ability checks, and you could use it three times. Mm -hmm. um, and if you are hit by an attacker within 30 feet of you, you can use your reaction to cause some. Um, damage as well as push the attacker away from you and that but that uses up your reaction so and you feel another tremor we should probably uh we should keep moving we should uh, uh, uh walk and talk this is the first tremor Flitz has felt well that was odd i, I have pretty good pace let's go <clears throat> he kind of starts walking forward I th right. they went this way Everyone, just call it your passive perception real quick. Ven. 
Uh, uh, 12. Kenna. 16. Coin. 10. Dax. 14! I don't need to ask Druk, because it's like a 20 or something. Druk. Yeah, 20. Flitz. 9. <laughs> oh. I told y'all. <laughs> blissfully unaware of what's going on. What's your fucking mood? Um... <laughs> So yeah, the uh, quarter you're standing in, <clears throat> Flitz is as far as you got in the Undercity. Um, He'll stop at this point and look and be like, well, okay, this is about all I know. Okay, uh, it stretches ahead, <laughs> it stretches forward 120 feet into darkness and does the same on the left and right. T-shaped corridor, we, boom, boom, boom. While we were having this whole introductory conversation with Flitz, could I make an insight check on him? Of course. Wonderful. Flitz, you don't need to make a roll at all. It's a nine. You can read Flitz pretty easily with a nine. <laughs> Everything was honest, what they said. All right. Cool. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Great. That's all. Okay. So, yeah, you got a T-shaped corridor uh, straight ahead, 120 feet into darkness. Uh, your boons from the uh, thing are gone, unfortunately, and then uh, Long gone, yeah. you have the corridors to the left and right. And aid is got a few hours left on it, too. Where are you from? The fast and the furious? What was it? Furious. Oh, furious. Yeah, we're all just one big family. We're from the core. Oh, I am, too. Hollyshire. It's, uh, you know, north... West. We're kind of from all uh, over the core. Oh, y'all aren't actually like a big family. It's like, uh... I mean, big... we kind of got thrown together on a murder investigation, and then, you know, it was just meant to be. Very cool. Very cool. Hey, you want to know something? And he'll lean over to Coin, and he'll start talking to Draconic. I learned this in a ruins that I found. Mm-hmm. I learned from worship of Bahamut the, the north wind the wings of justice and I learned yet. and I learned from Draconic class at the academy oh that's yes, yes, it makes sense can Druk check to see if he can hear or see anything down in any of these corridors? Uh, it's 120, it goes, they stretch 120 feet and then it's just darkness. That's mm. about it. You don't hear anything, though. Yeah. No. You just feel the tremors every so often, that's about it. Does, uh, oh, that's a, that's a real dumb question, but I'm gonna ask it anyway, because it's dumb. Do, does either path feel specifically more tremory than the other? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, Kevin Bacon's in one of them. <laughs> That's a tremor. Anyone smell like? Yeah. Anyone smell like cooking pork? Can Can I see uh, any uh, any dust that's nope. been disturbed on the ground? Nope. It's all super clean. Yep. Cool. You got straight, left, right. Everybody got a D three. Go, go left. That's how you get out of mazes, right? You just keep to the left. All right, you're going left. Oh, I just. Thought... There's six of you now. You could split, or seven of you, because Grump's here. Hi, I'm Grump. No one really asked about me. You see a little who goblin who looks like near elderly. Uh, they're wearing a weird outfit that's like gold, like sheen gold, like really gross and shiny gold. Uh, goggles on their head. And a bagpipe and a bagpipe strap to their back. Gr grung, grump, grump, the brave. The brave. Oh. Flitz, Mr. Tumblepots, that's it. No. Uh, You're an archaeologist, you said. Uh, Self-imposed. You know. mm. Basic curiosities, you know. I know Art an archaeologist. I take the lead on okay. that left side. Left corridor. Um, All right. 120 feet. 
And then when you get to the darkness, uh, it's at this point you can see dim crystals that emit a soft purple light illuminate this corridor that stretches about another 120 feet before turning to the left. Cool, he's just going to keep going. Okay. Uh, Let's... Keeping an eye out for anything suspicious. Okay. Um, Let's pull out a little stay... notebook. He's going to stay at least 30 feet in front of okay. everyone. Uh, it stretches ahead another 120 feet, and you come to a solid wall. Uh, and embedded into the dark stone wall is a humanoid handprint with a symbol for each school of magic engraved around said handprint. And Grump's like, he's smelling, he's like, I smell someone familiar. And he just turns around and walks the other way. Like back the way you came. Grump, where are you going? I smell someone back this way. Are you sure? Yep. Can you be 100% positive that a familiar scent is coming from that direction? Yeah. All right, let's follow him. We maybe look at this door first for a second? Briefly. I'm writing it down. Don't worry. He has a little, <clears throat> he has a small little book, and you watch as he's I'll, moving. I'll don't worry. Trump, you guys no, investigate it's fine. the wall. Oh, okay. We're Come on, Kenna. Here to find, we're down here to find this archmage that Iris and... Ogden Boone. If Grump smells something familiar, that's probably Ogden Boone. Yes, so we should. Oh, it doesn't smell that's like Ogden. Who does it? You're smell not like helping. Grump? What do you smell it? It smells like the others. Well, from my group. there we go. Could it be me? <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, uh, one thing. Uh, I'm gonna. You said it was there was handprints, each one uh, with a one difference. single handprint with a symbol for each school of magic engraved around it in a circle. Oh, okay, so one hand. Okay, I'm gonna put my hand on the handprint. You feel a warm sensation go through your hand. Hmm. Just warmth. Yeah. Hmm. And the symbols around the door start to glow faintly, but not fully. They like. I'm gonna cast. I'm gonna just gonna like really quick cast like fire or press digitation through like. Is that a cancer? Try to cast. Yeah. What's the school? Uh, transmutation. The transmutation symbol fully turns on and glows. Uh huh. That's what I thought. Okay. Um. Then I will do. Wait. What did you do? What did you do? I cast press digitation, which would be uh, of the transmutation school, which activated the transmutation rune. Um. I'm gonna then do a firebolt through my hand as okay. well. Also, just for my brain, for my brain, uh, is anyone else following Grump? Who's all following Grump? Druk is. Druk. I think it's just <clears throat> Druk and Kenna. Okay, cool. Uh, okay, then you cast firebolts so that causes the evocation symbol to light up. All right. Uh, so, oh, I'm already concentrating on transmutation. Damn. Let's say if I had, I cast aid on someone earlier. Would that? Would that magic still be working? Oh, uh, aid's still going on. Oh, it just went down. Yeah. Okay. Uh, minor illusion. Okay, so the illusion one lights up. And I think that is the control flame. Yes. Okay, so now I'm going to have to start using spell slots, so... Wait, 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 wait. Oh, yes. Can I try? Uh, yeah. I take my hand off, and I see if that... Uh, if they're still glowing. Okay. He immediately put, puts his up. Okay. Feel a warm sensation. Okay. He, oh my god, yes. does Blade Ward? He casts it through his hand. Uh, what spell school is that? Abjuration. All right, that's a cantrip. Yep. Okay. Abjuration. Someone glows. He will cast Mage Hand, which is Conjuration. Okay. Conjuration. Someone glows. Which one are we missing? Enchantment. Uh, necromancy. Uh, Enchantment. Necromancy. Yeah. Enchantment. I don't have those two as cantrips. I don't either. I have a fuck ton, just not of those. <laughs> yep. I have necromancy and divination cantrips. Oh, I need but... divination too. Oh yeah. Uh, wait, is, can I, can I can I and here? Druck are walking down the court. Walking down the court. Uh, uh, can, can How I... far away are they? About at this point, probably like sixty feet. Uh, Anna, do you think? Do you, what? Do you, do you have any divination, necromancy, or enchantment uh, cantrips? I got two out of three. Fantastic. Could you would you mind coming back and casting him into this hand thing? Hey Druk, can you keep an eye on Grump? Yeah, we'll trade. Are you okay? cast, he'll cast web on Grump. No to to keep him still so he doesn't go anywhere. He casts Dimension Door and gets out of it. <laughs> I 
I mean, I, my my stuff's at will, so I can just keep casting web on it. All right, mm-hmm. he's casting dimension door, and he's going to go 500 feet down the corridor. Okay. Doesn't he need to roll the yeah, D100? He's, he's doing it right now. <laughs> oh no. 20. Cast a worst second level spell. Ah shit. Uh, there's rules for if it gets cast at a lower level. I have it here. Automatically fails, so he's stuck in. the Oh, does it? Yeah. Oh. Oh, I thought it was that it. I thought it was that it just used. Nope. Oh, okay. Oh, shit. All right. Good to know. He's like, what the fuck? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna Chill. see that Drux got this covered, and I'm gonna go to the door. Um, so I just put my hand here. Mm-hmm. All right, I'm gonna cast Guidance. Okay. Uh, that one's Divination. Divination symbol glows. And Toll the Dead. Okay. Necromancy, Necromancy. symbol glows. Uh, I just need an uh, enchantment. We got conjuration, transmutation, and evocation. Ah. Yeah, yeah. The only thing we have, we have all of them. We just right. need enchantment. Yeah. All right, all right. Here goes nothing. I'm gonna put my hand up and I'm gonna cast bless. Okay, Grum's gonna try to break out of the. <laughs> Four. Roll. Yeah. Roll. I'm gonna roll my d100 for for the spell slot for bless. Oh, but the fourth level spell slot did get used up when he cast dimension door because the spell failed. Anyways, uh. Oh, it still uses the spell slot of the original. It doesn't go down to the oh, second no. level. No, because it, it can't be cast. Dimension or can't be cast at second level, so it doesn't use the spell slot at all. It just fails. All right, uh, sorry. What okay. are you doing? Uh, I was casting bless, and I'm gonna roll see what spell slot it uses. Ninety five. <laughs> all right, level that bless. is a tenth level bless. Yep. Yep. So roll. Do I? On, so man. real quick, when we cast these spells into this thing, do the effects still happen? No. Oh, they just get it. Gr- so, okay, so I, because otherwise I'm like, I could give bless to like Can the I... entire party right now. I can't Intelligence reaction cast guidance on nope. Ben, right? not right now. So. Okay. All right, Wiz- uh, intelligence save, oh boy, all right. Come on, Ben. Uh, coin's right here, right? Yes. Okay, hey, you've got, your, you've got your new stone to help you out. Oh yeah, oh yeah, this is still, this is still a 50-50 shot. DC 20. 20, uh, 26. You succeed, and the last symbol glows. Whew, that was stressful. And as the last symbol glows, you can't move your hand away. Uh, oh, dear. A light of right? numerous untold colors emanates around your hand. It starts off feeble and dim and grows to be nearly blinding with its light. Then, a spike of horrendous pain shoots through your palm and into your heart. Oh, which, you, bad idea. which you feel your heart stop momentarily <laughs> before another shock races through your body and your heart begins again <sighs> as the wall parts before rising upwards into the ceiling your palm burns that... momentarily before the pain vanishes completely and you're all now staring down at well not everyone because some grump and drucker like down the corner mm-hmm. uh, those of you that are still here are now staring down a dark descending staircase that is illuminated by floating crystal orbs of bright purple light. At the bottom of the stairs, about 60 feet down, is a diamond-shaped archway that leads into a chamber where bright blue light emanates from. Vin, are you all right? You need yes. to pull out a diamond? No, no, I'm fine, I'm fine. I'm, I'm, I'm still moving. You sure? Yes. Did you have any expended spell slots? I think I had like one or two, yeah. Take a peek for me, please. I had uh, two, one third level, one fourth level. Okay, those are those are recharged. Ooh. Okay, I feel pretty good. Grum's gonna try to get out of the webs again. <laughs> Eighteen. No. Well, uh what what's it what what's it do? Um a creature restrained by its webs because you use an action to make a strength check against your spell save DC. Um if it succeeds, it's no longer restrained, but it's still uh it's still um uh, rough or rough terrain. I can smell my Difficult friends. Terrain. Yes, wait for everyone. Ruck, Grump, we found a door over here. Great, I can smell my friends back this way, though. Maybe we Great. should get Ogden and them first. Yes, I just wanted to see where this door led to the diamond archway. Diamond archway. Did we hear something about a diamond archway before? No. Okay. Nope. Did I? Nope. Okay. All right. Well, hopefully it stays open. Uh, let's let's go. 
Yes, yeah, so we should go. We should go and try and find out. Yes. Um, but the numbers, right? It, the ground here is it like? It's we, uh, dark stone. So it is stone. Yeah. Okay. Never mind. Um. Yeah. Never mind. Damn. Okay. Okay. All so right, Grump, we're coming. All right, Drak, lead the way. All right. And he's gonna like take his cloak and like do like a gesture with it, and the, and the webbing will fade away. Okay. I can smell them down the right hand corridor. Right. That's cool. Then there's the north corridor that doesn't smell like anything. Did you smell anything on the in the left corridor? No. Right, right corridor, going. All right. The purple crystals that dimly light this corridor flicker occasionally, and it looks like part of the ceiling have collapsed in places recently. And after about 60 feet, it looks like there was a partial collapse, and a very claustrophobic tunnel was made that looks like it can only be traversed by crawling through, and Grump kind of, yep, smells like them through there. Hello, is anyone in there? No response. Maybe say it louder. Hello, is anyone in there? No response. How high up is the ceiling? Uh, like 25 feet. And completely is it, collapsed. Is it, is it, like completely is it, blocked so off. So it's collapsed. Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. I wonder um, if he'll rub his hands together and he'll attempt. He's going to focus and he's going to take <laughs> some time. It's going to take a minute to try to do this, but he's going to try to mend. Y'all, it's. He's unaware of some of these spells Just right now, but he's going to attempt to <laughs> bending on some of the uh, stone. Okay, some of the stone, some of the stone gets fixed back together, but doesn't float to the ceiling. It just kind of just you can you're slowly putting pieces of the stones back together. He'll pick that piece up, put it away, grab some pieces. This is while they're doing whatever the the group is doing. He'll. Uh, I am going to who summon wants, up who my. Wants to come with me? I'm going to summon up my Raven familiar. Oh. And send it flying through. You got it, boss. Thank you. Your raven talks to you. Yes. And it That's new. Flies through. Are you looking through its eyes? Yeah, I'm gonna. Once it's through, I'm, as it's time to go through, I'm gonna yeah, switch to okay. its senses. Uh, the last tunnel is incredibly claustrophobic and narrow, uh, but for a raven, it's easy. Mm -hmm. Uh. You get a sense from the ravens, like as it's flying through, that even the slightest shift inside could collapse it further. And glad, uh, I, sent, glad I sent a small bird through. It stretches for about two hundred feet, and spills. Oh, out. then I'm gonna lose. Oh, I lose the connection. At, okay. Uh, I think like one hundred. Yeah. But it can still it can still communicate with me. Yeah. And tell me tell okay. telepathically. Oh, there's a room in here. All right. Uh, tell me about it. Is there anyone in there? Uh. There is a series of spherical crystals tied to Oh, wait, towards... sorry, actually. No. Sorry, sorry. I can't talk. Uh, 100 feet, I can't even. Outside of 100 feet, okay, I can't no. even talk to it telepathically. So. Uh, doo -doo. Yeah, I think I can. Oh, no. Okay, sorry, sorry. The seeing and hearing. Sorry, the telepathic communication is 100 feet. The seeing and hearing doesn't have a distance. Okay, so you, you see a. So I'm still seeing. Yes, okay, yes, cool. sorry. Uh, you see a, a corridor, another corridor. Uh, filled with booby traps. A series mm. of spherical crystals glow a violent red color and are tied taut to the floor and ceiling. Uh, each of these crystals gives off a rather distinct uh, like they're charged with some sort of energy. And beyond this intricate web of humming crystals is a stone door. And the only way to reach it is through the 120 foot, 120 feet of booby trapped corridor. I'm going to be just narrating this out loud for everybody. Okay. The raven can easily just All right, Grump, it sounds like your friends are safe on the other side of all those booby traps. But, uh, Daima, we gotta figure out who it is, though. You're here to find Can't Ogden. Just... Ogden could be with them, right? You said you didn't smell him, though. Well, he could be. He could be hiding his scent. <laughs> <laughs> who wants to come with me? This is boring. I'll go with you, Grump. Just... Grab you by the hand and cast Dimension Door. Oh, ah! okay, that'll do it. Well, we'll see. 34. 
Cast of War fourth level spell, so it does use a spell slot. All right, so 500 feet beyond, he can pass the booby trapped corridor <laughs> and gets into the room beyond the booby trapped corridor. So, Kenan and Grump, you appear in a in a room uh, where a group of humanoids appear to be nursing incredibly severe wounds and resting in a makeshift panic room. A dim crystal light has been hung from the ceiling, and a series of bedrolls have been set up. Uh, to the left of the door you came in from is a massive hunk of stone that looks like it weighs nearly 2,000 pounds and is pushed up against the door, uh, rather. Uh, these individuals seem to recognize you before Grump pushes past you and joins them and begins checking up on each of them. Uh, you see there's an elephant-like humanoid in cleric-like vestments known as a loxodon, uh, a fairy wielding a, pr uh, a fairy wielding a pretty colorful assortment of weaponry, and a gold dragonborn in a series of monk-like garments. Um, he gathers them together for a brief few moments alone in the corner of the chamber, and you can see each of them lower their heads in form of group hug. Uh, after a few short moments, you watch Grump produce the body of an owlin from his bag of holding, while the Loxodon begins performing a ritual over the body. Uh, Grump heads over to you and pulls you aside to your own little corner. Okay, they're going to be busy for an hour bringing their friend back to life. Uh... I told them you're looking for Ogden. They're yeah. not leaving this room until it's safe, and I'm going to stay behind to make sure they're all right. I'll get you back okay. to your friends, and then... All right. Uh, he reaches but, into his clothes but... and produces the book he's been carrying about the city and hands it to you. Uh, uh, what's, what's this? It's the book that I tore the map out of. It's about the city. Oh. All right. Uh... They said you and your friends can take the western chamber should you need a place to rest at any point. The eastern is occupied from some, by somebody. Uh, they also said to forgive them for not wanting to talk. They're exhausted. No, yeah, I get it. Um, do, Would they want anything to eat? I can give them some berries. You see they, have, can... like, they, you see they have a fuck ton of food. Um, okay. But before this conversation can get finished, a door on the eastern section of this chamber opens and out steps a half work man in his late thirties with swept back black hair tied into a ponytail with strips of gray running down through it, uh, a golden septum piercing, wearing a large tattered gray scarf around his neck and wearing a set of platinum chainmail underneath a tattered black leather tunic. Uh, strapped to his side is a war hammer shaped into the visage of Bahamut. Uh, they're missing their left arm. He looks bruised, bloodied, and filthy. Uh, you would have attended festivals in the capital and okay. two, two, three years ago, and you recognize this to be the Crown Prince, Estes Geraldin. Uh, the only things on his person that are immaculate and well taken care of is the Warhammer and the Amulet of Bahamut around his neck. Uh, he sees you and goes... I immediately, like, just instinctually bow. Ugh. Like, just, like a head bow. Like, uh, that's not necessary. Um. Yeah, sorry it's been a while since you've been seen anywhere. You're presumed dead. All right. Just... Um, did Joseph get back? We have not seen Joseph. I'm sorry. Oh. Yeah, they're looking for Joseph and Ogden. Oh. Um, I can help with that. I have stuff to find down here myself, so... I mean, we have our adventuring group. Oh, great. Yeah, if you want to come with us. Sounds good. Yes, of course. Uh, Grump, thank you. And he approaches the boulder and just pushes it aside with one hand. And then, follow me, I guess. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. Um, yeah. Uh, Grump, Ogden's friends, you guys take care of yourselves. Okay. Oh, they they the way, wave wave. You can see the, the Loxodon's too focused on casting a spell to, to kind of do anything. Um, okay. And eventually, you get back to that cave in, and he's like, Estes is kind of like maneuvering through the traps and showing you how to do it, and then gets to the corridor and just goes, "Oh yes, follow me. We should we can get through perfectly safe." Uh, yeah, I mean, I assume you've done it before. Yes. All right. Cool. And after about a couple minutes, those of you on the other side see Kenna crawl out, and then behind Kenna you see uh, those of you who would attend festivals in the capital, so Ven, Coin, Dax, Druck probably even recognizes this dude. 
Flitz, probably uh, the crown prince that's been missing for like three years. He crawls up behind Kenna. Ah, these must be your friends. Hello. Uh, yeah, this is the Faust and the Furious. And Flitz. And and Flitz, he's a newer member. Uh, we just came across each other, actually. Uh, it's good to meet you all. What brings you here? I um, mean... Oh, it's first. a story. You, sort of. Interesting. Oh, and you must be the ones Ogden talked about. Probably. He talks about us? Well, he just says he pays people. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, That'd that be us, us, yes. Well, this is interesting. Hello, I'm Princess Distrilden of... A nun deal? Yes. Uh, yes, your, uh, your majesty. Right, um... Your Highness? Which one is it? It doesn't really matter. I don't really care. Um, Fair. <laughs> Have you been given the bad news? About my mother? If so, yes. And about the headmaster? Also, yes. You being here does certainly give us a bit more legitimacy than we had before. That's good. Yes. What do you want to do with the iris? What's the iris? The source of all magic. In oh, this I have world. no interest in that. I came here looking for ancient medicine to cure my family's disease, specifically to cure my mother. But apparently, I didn't do that quick enough. Sorry. We're sorry. Regardless, it's good to see faces that aren't hostile. Hello. Hello. Um, so, what uh, what do you know of the headmaster being here? Just that he's here. Well, uh, and we've learned... he oh. killed someone who my friends back there are currently in the process of resurrecting. Ah, oh, good. Um, yes, uh, he... Uh, you, you've heard of the Iris, though, yes? Uh, briefly from Joseph. Uh, it's the source of all magic in the world, in, in multiple worlds, actually. That all, lines all up them. with what Joseph said. Yes, and the headmaster, we believe. Do you know anything about the moon or Shiadan? The book that Joseph and I found had mention of an entity living in the moon. Oh, that's, it's... um, is it this book? That's the one? Uh, Grunt gave it to me on our way out. Right. Uh, uh, here, Ben, you might have better use of this. This is where Grump got his map, apparently. Oh, thank you. Um, we believe the headmaster means to give the power of the iris to Shiadan, the entity in the moon, who is horrible and awful, and we've in we've encountered several times. So we should stop him. That is our goal, yes. And I guess as. Huh. Well, yes. This continent and countries are all my duty to protect now, I imagine, so... Is the... Okay, this is... Is it, though? Well... Yeah, what... Yeah, what dr well, uh, so... This mm -hmm. was explained before. I'll explain it again. Right, I'm just... When, yeah, the, queen the, when, the, when the queen passed away, mm -hmm. because the sun wasn't around... Uh, no one wanted to take up the throne, so the current crown general, who is Essis's father, took it up begrudgingly, mm -hmm. and would hand, said he would hand it over if his son was ever found. Yeah. Right. No, I know that. He the of a Nundio. This isn't. This place is no. a different king. Yeah, I didn't mean this part. I meant the core in old Nundio. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Gotcha. So for like, technically, you're not king of here. Uh. But, uh Am I able to pick up any funk off of what he's saying, or uh, what's your pa what's your passive insight? Twenty. No. Genuine. Cool. Just a little flustered as a player right now. So, uh, yeah. So he's like, uh, "Well, do you have any leads on where we should go?" Joseph and I didn't get too far when we came down here, originally. Uh, we just opened up a secret tunnel over uh back that that away um i mean and then we also have grump's map 
But uh, that's about it. Cool. We just know that we need to be down in the Undercity, because that's where the Iris is. Right. Good to know. Um... Hmm. And you're also here looking for Ogden, I imagine? Uh, yeah, Ogden and Joseph by extension, uh, but also trying to stop the headmaster. Uh, I understand the pair of them have delved deeper into this undercity. That's what the group back there told me. I think we're following their trail pretty closely. All right. Lead on, I suppose. Sorry, uh, this place is a nightmare and it's rattled me quite a bit. No, yeah, you, that's valid. Yeah, yeah. It, it is horrible. We just fought a giant baby. Oh, uh, that thing. Yes. Yeah. That's why we collapsed the tunnel. That makes sense. That and the automaton that was roaming. Yes. Yeah, that was a, uh, what was it? The big old colossal lava thing. That was no, frightening uh, to watch. We uh, snuck past that thing. Oh, no. The... Uh, the headmaster and the council took care of it. <clears throat> You've been missing for a long time. How long have you been here in this city? Two years. Or what year is it, actually? Uh, 69. Nice. What year did the campaign start? 68. <laughs> we started in uh, 68. Yeah, t uh, it'd be two years then, almost, yes. About two years. Most of it was trapped inside of a crystal. Uh, we're trapped inside of a crystal? Hard to explain. It was like a prison. I got caught by an automaton and it put me in a crystal prison. Hmm, I see. Was that here or somewhere else? That was here. I was captured in the city above and then woke up down gotcha. here. Gotcha. Gotcha. Well, there's been an awful lot of tremors, so we should probably get going before this whole place collapses into the volcano or lava. Mm -hmm. I know what these tremors are. That's the running theory. Yeah, my theory is that it's uh, slowly decaying uh, oh, just over time as a consequence of it sitting here for thousands of years unattended. Um, Druk, with your passive perception, you kind of feel something like trying to claw into your mind, but it's not succeeding. It's a familiar presence that's trying to do it, too. Look, I cre I fixed this one stone, though. I'll set it down. Congratulations. Uh, I guess he's gonna, he's gonna start looking around at everyone else to see if see if they're showing any sign of like glossy eyedness nope, or being influenced nope okay um yeah he's just gonna say uh, you will lead the way you seem to know this area a little bit better than i do just barely just barely see then you have yeah so you have the north corridor and then the left corridor that you open that door down want to see if the left door is still open ideally yes Okay. Alright, we head down the left. It's still open. Yeah. Shall we? Yes, we should get moving. I'm feeling a sort of itching, scratching in my mind. And Drak, you just hear the faintest whisper. It just says, Consume. Story. Dax leads over to Ven, and they just go, well, at least I'm not the liability this time. And she looks at Flitz and Druk. I think Flitz is 
it's very well meaning. Let's has the stone and he's putting it, trying to figure out how to put it in his bag the best way. Intelligence check. <laughs> 18? Yeah, sure. I'll say as he's sitting there trying to figure it out, the little stone in this one is... Uh, yeah. headband glows a little bit and then he's like almost like that light bulb he's like ah and he'll, he puts it so it doesn't mess up any of his belongings yes. alright uh, you can see Estes is like holding his Bahamut head warhammer in his arm that isn't disintegrated away you're all good at fighting I suppose yes yeah bye Bahamut willing, yes. We've made it this far. You all have the same. My family has worshipped Bahamut for generations, so... Oh, he can hear me. I thought I was whispering. Oh, I didn't know. No, that was my fault. I probably was uh, talking too loud anyway. Uh, ignore me. He'll fix his back. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, the door is still open on the left corner. It leads downstairs to the diamond-shaped arch. Whoever wants to take the lead can take. Yeah, Druck will. Okay. Flitz will kind of like linger back a bit, and <clears throat> he is going to cast <clears throat> Armor of Agathis on himself. Roll D100 first. Fun. He probably has never <laughs> cast a spell cast down a here. Cast spell yet. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Like Makes it. sense. Five. Five. No change in spell potency. Okay, um, but he's going to spend a sorcery point mm -hmm. to transmute it to lightning damage. Okay, cool. No, Ooh. to thunder damage. I'm sorry. Cool. Um, so where it looks like coalescing cold, there's a shift as the cold disperses into what looks like a cloud that kind of lingers and clings to him a little bit. So he looks almost like he's like <laughs> like he farted. walking in like a little bit of a cloud, like <laughs> swirling around him a little bit, yeah. Nice. So now oh. his armor bag at this will do thunder damage. It's okay, so cool. cold. That is a neat trick. <clears throat> that is very cool. It's, uh, flitz magic. Yeah, flitz magic. <laughs> yes. yes. Oh, uh, bonus action. He'll fly up in the air <laughs> about 10 feet. Okay, cool. This is yeah. fart, fart magic. Yeah. Look, that was it's... the running joke, you know. Was it's air? It's yes, a fart would be air. Yes. Sometimes I can make things stink. He'll presidigitate. Oh, I can do that too. A foul and... odor. <laughs> I, I target Flitz with my Cathedium crystal and make him smell a foul odor. Okay. Just specifically him. Okay. Uh, hold on. I need uh, Flitz to make a wisdom saving throw. Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, is this magic? Yeah. Yeah. Yay, gnome. It's a magical effect. Okay. Advantage one. Checks uh, 20. Yeah, you're that fine. That passes. You are not inca incapacitated. No. Incapacitated. <laughs> <laughs> from the foul odor of this crystal, which it... Oh, what was it? It was like Sriracha. Like, very strong. It was ghost peppers. Uh is oh, what I mean. No. Like this, just the smell of ghost peppers. <laughs> <laughs> his the flush on his nose and his cheeks and his ears kind of brightens a little bit, and he's like, uh, "I don't right. like that." So, Drek, yeah. you're, leading, you're leading the way down the stairs. Yeah. Okay. Uh, beyond the diamond-shaped arch, the room beyond is massive with a domed ceiling. A humming noise fills the air, and built into the walls are numerous archways carved into the stone walls. Carved into each archway is a word in the Cathatoon language, which is getting translated currently because of Ven's crystal. Um, in the center of the room is a large stone pedestal, complete with some sort of archaic-looking lever in the up position. And one of these humanoids that you've seen in the city is encased inside of a bubble. On the opposite end of the chamber is another diamond-shaped archway that leads into another corridor. And as you're just, like, looking, one of the archways says, Astral Sea, Ethereal Plane, Feywild, Shadowfell, Elemental Chaos, Elemental Plane of Air, Elemental Plane of Earth, Elemental Plane of Fire, Elemental Plane of Water, Mount Celestia, Bitopia, mm. Elysium, 
the Beastlands, Arborea, Isgard, Limbo, Pandemonium, The Abyss, Carcerai, Hades, Gehenna, The Nine Hells, Acheron, Mechanus, Arcadia, The Outlands, in brackets, Sigil. Oh, that ancient, <laughs> they had brackets. <laughs> brackets, Sigil. <laughs> and each archway, uh, yeah. What is, what is all of this? Do we all cut up to you downstairs? Yeah. Okay, right on. I think those are gateways to the other planes. We don't have time to mess around with this, right? We're just moving on. Yeah, you feel another tremor. Seeing the Mount Celestia one, Dax just kind of like puts a hand on Coin's shoulder and just kind of like kneels down and whispers to him, just like, it's not your time yet. Please don't go in there. It is said that Bahamut calls you to Celestia. You do not seek it out. But also, he, he, as he's riding, he grips the reins on uh, Nabert oh, right. just a little harder. Okay. I'll keep you Bye. safe. I was... Friend. worried about keeping you safe. Oh, okay. Thank you. Rough scratch. Oh. So Kitchen. are we proceeding to... Which one of these doors is the not portal? Where There's a the diamond-shaped door? archway just immediately adjacent of uh, the door you came through. Oh, okay. Alright. I guess he goes in there, <laughs> is just like dumbfounded, and then I guess turns around and then sees the way out. Yeah. Because it's right next to the door that he came in through. Okay. Alright. Uh, uh, the corridor beyond is dimly lit by floating orbs of purple crystal. The corpse of some sort of fleshy creature has been reduced to a fine, chunky, dried out red paste from what looks like a forceful impact, which has sundered and almost pulverized the stone around it. Uh, the walls and ceilings are also slick with incredibly old, dried gore, like many fleshy things were smashed to pieces in here. Uh, a sizable 65 foot tall hole has been broken through the left, through the wall to the left like something smashed through it. Uh, and about 20 feet past the hole uh, is a staircase that descends down about 60 feet. Past the hole meaning through the hole no, or like, like... Beside it. Okay. Of these things that are smashed uh do any of them look recognizable or do yeah, like they look smashed, more like, like the stuff that we had fought before uh not recognizable in the slightest just red okay. meat like something big just uh, ripped them apart and made them unrecognizable does the hole in the wall go through or does it is it just like a dent more like like a dent okay so like something like slammed into it really yeah. hard Okay. But it's 65 feet tall. The whole, the, the, the mm -hmm. dent is? Mm -hmm. Is it like that big around? Yeah. Huh. Or no, it'd be more like uh, 20 feet wide, 65 feet tall. It was like a trench dug yeah. vertically in the wall. Ooh. And does it look like it's just Im like bludgeoning damage impact, basically? Yeah. I don't want to run into whatever did that. We had to do it, don't we? Possibly. Shall we keep going? Sorry, I was muted. Yes, let's keep going. Uh, and he'll start like walking up the wall. Okay, and cool. Leading, leading from the ceiling <laughs> instead. Okay. I've never seen a bugbear do that before. That's interesting. That's just, just like, oh, you all are quite capable, it would seem. Is he part spider? The cloak is. Oh, he has a cloak. Dark slippers. Hmm? Doesn't Dark have slippers of spider climbing, too? No, cloak of arachnid, no, that's it. Right. Oh, I missed the cloak. It was behind his large frame. Oh, here we go. Easy to miss. 
Um, heading down the stairs, you're still like avoiding. <laughs> I'm just imagining it's just like a, like almost like a little yeah. bandana <laughs> off his back because it's he's those, so like, big. Mini, it's just like those mini yeah. cloaks that you get, like those hang up, not even like mid back. It's like <laughs> barely. Nice. It's like a bib, really, that he could yeah. wear. Um, the so like I said, the ceiling and walls are caked in dried gore. Uh, the stairs are too, and as you descend, you come to a 65 foot tall stone door covered in eight arcane glyphs that reflect the schools of magic. Is the door closed? Yeah, big circular door. Does it look like another thing where we need to cast all of the. Don't know. Press doesn't, the does, doesn't have a handprint on it. Okay. Just a big circular door. Press. Glyphs. Press digitation at the glyph uh, for transmutation. Okay. What what's going on? We are dead end. Um. Am I still getting the sense that if I cast detect magic, it, everything would ping off? Uh, not down here, no. I'm gonna ritually start casting detect magic. Okay. Interestingly enough, it casts instantly. And uh, the door radiates abjuration magic. Uh, the door's definitely enchanted. Um, does anyone have any, like... Oh, wait, I can dispel magic. I can do that shit. I think I can. Hey guys, I can fix this. Go and right I'm gonna, ahead. I'm gonna attempt to cast dispel magic. Okay, what level? Um, we'll find level. out. Yeah, we'll yeah. find yeah. out. Initially third level, but we'll okay. find out. Roll D100. <clears throat> Using my custom Kenna dice for this. Twenty. Twenty. You said third level. Yeah. Cast it for a second level spell. So it doesn't use up a spell slot, but it doesn't work. Uh, can you cast? Does this, what level spell is this spell magic? I can't remember. It's a third level. Oh, spell so magic. it just doesn't get cast at all. Okay, I'm gonna try again. Okay, go for it. Fifty-three. Uh, cast it for a six level spell. Do you have access to six level spells yet? I don't oh. think so. Okay, uh, DC sixteen wisdom save. Okay. Oh, wait. I have advantage on wisdom. Space. You do. All right. Uh, that's a natural 19 plus 928. Okay. This was a six level spell. So the door just grinds to the side. Um, and you see a, sh a circular chamber beyond encased in solid ice. Every wall, floor, and ceiling is slick with rime. It is incredibly cold in here, but something that resembles fire seems to be glowing under random points of the room. So, are we gonna keep going forward? Or? It seems yeah, like gonna, the only way forward. Yeah, Druk's gonna go in okay. kind of uh, carefully. Okay. Try to... Okay. So as Druk enters the room, does everybody else follow Druk? Okay. Uh, I'm following. He's he's doing it from the ceiling I know. still. Okay. okay. Uh, a section of ice on the wall melts away, and out steps a Goliath that is disheveled, wrinkled, and wears a hooded violet robe with a blue scarf, and the left half of their face is concealed by a featureless porcelain mask. Ven and Flitz would recognize Darren Arnalius, one of the members of the council. <clears throat> this city, kind of like they're being puppeted like a marionette when they talk and move around belongs to the headmaster he alone will bring about a new age the world will be better for it draws a wand like like really rigid movements draws a wand from his robes he has made us vessels for the next stage allow me to show you that potential 
and the chamber begins to tremble, and massive faces that resemble the Goliath begin forming on the walls, fire coalescing in their mouths. And when we get back from break, everyone's going to roll initiative. Oh boy. Cool. Break time. Welcome, Lex. Welcome, Flitz. Oh. Hey, buddy. <laughs> hey. We're we'll back in 10 minutes from break. Woo! We're in break time.
Sam will be back with us, hopefully. Uh, but time for a battle. Which I'll move you all over to the battle map now. <clears throat> Feel free to. Most of you would probably be just in through the doorway. Druk, you can be somewhere else if you want. Okay. Uh, all right. So. That'll bring us... To Estes is first up. That's interesting. Oh. I would probably be somewhere around here. All right. Uh, Estes is first. So he's just going to run in <laughs> and attack said wizard. Brandishing the hammer of Bahamut. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Uh, dash. To get there. That sucks. Uh, bonus action. He's not going to do anything. That'll bring us to Ven, which I believe Sam told me. Ven is going to cast Racial Armor of Agathis, so no spell slot gets used. Okay. Uh, if that's all he said that Ven would do, so that's all Ven is going to do. Is do the Racial Armor of Agathis. So, Boom. That's what happens, and he gets. Oh, he didn't see what level did he say he was going to do it at? Actually, I don't know. Regardless, does it? Um, I don't know how much he wanted to do it for. I'm going to say 10 temp HP, and he can correct me when he gets back. All right, that's Ven. Let's go. Armor Vagathus. Uh, Dax. We are gonna go... It's 35 feet to get to him from where I am now. Mm -hmm. Gonna get there. Gonna bonus action rage. Yeah. And I'm going to ask for a intelligence Ooh. That would be really yeah. cool. Uh, 21. That does succeed. Wizard. And I kind of figured that it would, but mm. still, you know, we're here, we're here. You're raging. Um, I am raging. Uh, we're gonna, we're taking out the longsword, and, okay, it's versatile. It's also, if we're, are we still in, within an hour of the first fight? because I still yeah. had been concentrating on magic weapons, so it's still magic. Or, uh, I think it's called magic weapon, right? Yeah, it's called magic yeah. weapon. So magic weapon would still be up. Zam! Um, can, can I ask a, uh, a dumb question? Um, is a, a longsword considered a heavy weapon? No. Okay. So I can't do nope. great weapons master? Nope. Okay. Thank you. Um, we're just gonna whip that thing around and then try to hit this bitch. Go for it. It's a wizard. <laughs> 25 to hit. Oh, yeah. Ah, uh, that's <clears throat> gonna be... And it's magical because the mm -hmm. thing's still up, so that is going to be... Goliath versus Goliath right now. It's great. <laughs> It's like fighting my cousins at Thanksgiving. <laughs> 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 10 plus 2 is 12 damage okay. for the first attack. Yep. And then going in with the second attack. Yep. Not great, not great, 17. Yep, it still hits. Okay. They're wizard. Okay. Yeah. Ooh, max damage. So 17 damage total with the rage. All right, cool. Nice. Anything else? That's your action bonus action movement, basically. And then Dax is just going to post it up there, looking at Estes and just kind of like nodding, like, let's just like get this fucker. Okay. All right. Uh, the Goliath heads that are growing out of the ice, kind of the mummy style, <laughs> open their mouths and they're going to shoot. One of them is going to shoot a fireball. Right by the doorway. Fuck. So I need Flitz, Coin, Kenna, Ven, Dex saves. 
Uh, oh, I am just outside ten feet from coin, huh? Yes. Oh wow. Oh, I get a. Oh, I get the plus one. Hell yeah. I don't what know. What level, I, didn't, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't see what level you wanted to cast major armor at. So you only have ten ten HP, but you can change that to whatever you wanted to cast it at. You mean Ar armor value? This? That's what I meant. Yeah. It it it, it automatically is second second level for the racial okay, one. Cool. So yeah, I need you, coin, Kenna, and Flitz to make deck saves. Well, I don't know if that's gonna make it. And it feels 15. like it feels like evocation spells are a little more potent in this chamber. Oh boy. Oh. Yeah. Um. All right. Kind of got a fifteen. Fifteen. All right. Fifteen is the DC. Oh, oh god. All right, uh, Ben. Sorry, what'd you get? Fifteen. Succeeds. Exactly. So half damage. Coin. What'd you get? Nine. Wow. Uh, I think you can add your. Shields AC bonus to the deck save. Oh, is Shield it master. a? Because it's a. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh wait. Oh, it's a deck save. So yeah. Shields bonus plus two. Oh, puts 11. me up to eleven. That still fails. Oh. Yeah. All right. Uh, so thirty-four fire damage to coin. Uh, but I am fire resistant, so it's half. Wait, are you? I am. At least that's what my sheet says. I think it's because I have because I. Did whatever ha held whatever. Do you have a ring of fire resistance. Sorry. Oh. Okay. Yeah, cool. Way back when we fought. The okay, fire. so everybody takes that took that takes seventeen fire damage. Uh, I'm gonna. Hmm, yeah, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna cast absorb elements. We'll see what happens. Forty-one hundred. Yep. <laughs> uh. Oh boy. I am out of triple digits. <laughs> one. No change in spell potency. Okay. Literally zero zero into one. Nice. nice. Okay, that's that. All right. So it was 17 damage? Yeah. So half of 17 is eight? eight. Yep. Okay. All right. That's that. That's going to bring us to Darren Arnalius. This Goliath wizard. He's going to do the same thing, I think. <laughs> yeah. He's going to cast a fourth level fireball. Uh, on the towards the bugbear on the ceiling. Whoa! <laughs> so Rude. you also notice he's not getting, he's not having to. Oh yeah, he actually does have to roll for these two. Ninety four. <laughs> That'll be a tenth level fireball. That he just okay. But he has to make an intelligence save first. For yeah, he succeeds. So uh, tenth level fireball jettisoning towards Druk. <laughs> I guess there's roasted Neat. bugbear on the menu. So tonight. deck save, Druk. Come on, Druk. Well, I look at <laughs> well, I look at how much dice that would be. Yeah. Come on, Maul on the bottom, fill your soul, bitch. Use huh. the spite you have for okay. the moon to save yourself. A D six yeah. level, so is it? So it'll be. Uh, it's only one additional D six. Yeah. That's. Mm -hmm. Whew. So, that's 16 D6. That's a big fail. What'd you get? Oh, no! No! What'd you get? 11. That fails. I rolled a 3. Do you at least have evasion? Evasion? Yeah, he does. That's gonna happen. Which would've... What? Evasion will still have it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. if, if, he, if he had succeeded, that would've been funny as hell, because it would've avoided all that damage. Yeah. Yeah, that would have been funny, Sam. <laughs> it hey, it's still good. It's still helpful. It's still halved. Yeah. Why that not rolling? Roll. I mean, there we could go. You, could you also you use uh, D &D uncanny on? dodge? No. Uh, fifty-two fire damage halved because of evasion. Druk, you take twenty-six fire damage. Okay. Just... <laughs> oh. Oh. I also have resistance to fire damage. Where am I getting that? Why from? is everybody getting oh, resistance to fire Frostbrand. damage? Oh, Frostbrand. Frostbrand right. short. Oh, yeah, yeah. So 26, then halved to 13. 13. 10th level fireball. 10th <laughs> level fireball, 15 damage on a failed save. Wow. <laughs> All right. He's, like, he's going to tilt his head confused. Oof. Oh, you. Fuck. Sorry. Forgot he has a wand of fireballs, too. Whatever. We well, can't right. use a cast uh, cast a tenth no. level fireball through that one. 
Well, no, he can't. Uh, fuck. Uh, bonus action. He's gonna pull his pants down. I don't know. All right. <laughs> Flitz tumble pots. Okay. Um. Guess the only person that can really sense this because it's the closest because you're within ten feet. Mm -hmm. You feel coin. You feel the wind kind of pull a bit and you see a tenseness as this goliath came and showed himself um kind of rigidness take to flit's shoulders and quickly he darts to the northwest mm -hmm. 10 15 20 25 30 oh um, yeah flits and you he's barely making any noise as he's like running across the ground it looks like he's just kind of being picked up by the air a bit and as he comes to skids to a stop um he drops a small pouch to the ground just right at his feet okay. um but he's not doing anything with it yet uh he's going to kind of focus a bit and he's going to pull the wind very <laughs> airbendery. He's going to kind of grab the wind into both hands and he's going to throw two Eldritch Blast at uh, okay. Go old boy. It. So for the first one, is a 24 to hit. Oh, yeah. Um, and for the second, not that great, is an 11? Yeah, he's a wizard. Didn't cast major armor, so. <laughs> Cute. Um, so for the first, he is going to take. 13 force damage plus 3 thunder damage mm -hmm. um, because of his yep. genie vessel and then for the second he's going to take 11 force damage right. as these two heavy impacts of wind just slam into the sky um, that'll be his go All right, this that's it Goliath is looking hurt this mage council member is looking hurt bringing us to coin uh, so Actually, I think it does bring us because I rolled a ten for Nabbert, so I believe. It brings oh, us uh, coin! You need to make a concentration check for magic weapon from the fireball you, you got hit with. Yes, absolutely. So when I if I took it was 13. 17? 13 damage. Yeah. What's yeah. where? What's my ten or seventeen? It would be 17. ten. Oh, so I need to roll a ten. Yeah. And that's a charisma save, or is that a constitution? Constitution. Constitution. Thank you guys. I appreciate it. Thank you for your patience. Uh, okay, here we go. I rolled a 10. I got a 10. Okay, Magic Weapon's still up. Ah! All right. So then uh, Nabbert is going to All right, uh, run forward. Um, a speed of 40 is a 1, 2. <laughs> Sorry, the map. I apologize if anybody's listening and they heard me just. Uh, the map became an elk for about a second. It was beautiful. So, yeah, Navrat's going to run ahead to 40 feet. Um, can we call that here to make sure? Uh, yep. All right. Uh, 40 feet, and I guess they's going to take a couple of... I could do a bite attack and then a claw attack. Yeah, go for it. Go Nabbert. Go Nabbert! 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 Nabbert. All right, so that's... All right, so the first one is the claw attack. Mm-hmm. Which is a nine. No, it's a 25. That hits. Hit. All right, and then fight its attack. Is a 24. Yeah, Damn. both hit. Nabbert just runs up Nab and... Never has a axe to grind. All right, so that is all right. So then, so then, D eight plus four is. Oh my God, twelve on, <laughs> twelve on the bite. This bear is pissed. Twelve on the bite, and then. Uh, He's looking. He, this guy's looking hurt. <laughs> yeah, and then two D six. Plus four. Holy Christ, this bear is pissed. That is 
uh, 13 on the claws. Yeah, he's yeah. looking real bad. Uh, yeah, so it's, it's, is it coin now? Yeah. All right. Uh, uh, I'm close enough. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna stab at him. Regular okay, style. go for it. Mildrock Yeagrin. Uh, it's 24. We've established yeah. that hit. Wizards. <laughs> yep. We didn't have time to cast Mage Armor. And then uh, 15 How do you want to damage. Do this? Uh, uh, is there any way I can take him down to interrogation level of damage? Uh, you did seem like he's being puppeted. Looks like there's no interrogating this individual. Right. Then I am going to clip this puppet's strings like start like like a punch in the face then simultaneously unchain the whip sword mm -hmm. then missing everyone swinging around and just like cut the strings and then uh, just like unswitch it again and just stab right through the head all right they just so. all right as they uh all right uh as the form of the Goliath slumps forward and hits the floor, a light flashes from behind the ice all, of, all along the wall, ceiling, and floor, uh, and the ice coating the room begins to melt away. Druck gets incredibly wet. <laughs> oh, no. Um, suddenly, the Goliath's body is lifted up into the air by an unseen presence, and hundreds and thousands of voices sound out. They sound thankful, and when they speak, you catch glimpses of the figures floating in the bubbles around the city, and the voices in unison say... End our torment. Free the iris. Stop them. The body of the Goliath then explodes in a flash of red red light, revealing a doorway concealed behind the ice. Uh, d That's the uh, end of the combat. There, there was fire like coming out of these things. Does it yeah, no, seem the, to be triggered by this guy or something? They're all gone. Okay. Everything's gone. Just a normal room. Dax puts her arm out towards Estes for like a bro handshake. You know when they do like that thing? Yeah, he does it, I guess. Yeah, just like. We did, didn't, I didn't really do much. But still. Uh, is everyone alright? Besides those of us who got hit? I'm fine. Perfectly fine. I'm alright. Uh, you Let's... see Druk kind of like reach down to the Frostbrand sword, like kind of partially unsheathe it and then put it back again and kind of like just kind of have like a his scowl going on like mm -hmm. wow wow <laughs> like that that saved my ass kind of like mm -hmm. you all right uh, i'm fine i'm fine uh, another, we should keep moving another tremor just the tremors yeah. are getting more violent and you feel like you're incredibly close to the source of them. But yeah, a doorway forms behind the ice as it melts away. Yes, let's just keep going. Uh, I'm well, even out of action though. I'm going to use a bonus action. Uh, harness the divine and get my second level spell slot back. The only second level spell slot I've used. I think Sounds good. To get the bear, but I'm gonna yeah. Or no, it wasn't to get the bear. Then. But I'm gonna use that to get yes. Does this one have another book to add to your collection since you do the book uh, magics? No body, no equipment left over when they exploded. Okay. Oh, okay. Just like, I'm not giving you any more spell books. No, it's just like <laughs> the body just exploded in light and it took all their stuff with them. Fair. Okay. You're not yeah, getting I, a I council just... member spell book? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> another I was, one? <laughs> I was just thinking like, hey man, uh, the wizard, they, they, they have a spell book on them. <laughs> I already have one council now member spell book. <laughs> can now use any spell in any spell book that he has, so... Uh-huh. Of spell levels that he has. Yeah. I mean, it's like D&D like Pokemon. Gotta collect all the spell books. <laughs> can, he, can he just... Can he, like... Of the... So, let's say there's a spell that he can't currently cast. If he rolls the dice on it and tries to cast it and the percentage is high enough, would it... No? Okay. All right, all right. It needs to be a spell that you have a spell software to cast. That's how it's <laughs> cast, yeah. All right, all right. 
All right. Oh uh, yeah. So a door appears on the wall behind some of the ice that is no longer there. There's no ice remaining. The faces are all gone as well. Well, if we uh, don't have any need to be stopping and resting up, we should continue. Yes, let us. Let Based us on go. those tremors, it doesn't sound like we have much time to do much of anything. Nah. I will Are lead. We... Okay. And Druk oh, just takes off at a fuck. at a hot pace. All right, through the through the next door. Yep. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> a chamber. The ceiling. Okay. A chamber identical <laughs> to the previous lies before you. But instead of ice covering every surface, you see a variety of colorful lights floating through the air. The lights shift and coalesce into the form of a teal-colored tiefling with curled ram-like horns and wearing a red frock coat, maroon-colored vest underneath, and black leggings with very prominent spiked high heels. Uh, their, horns, their horns are also pierced with rubies at the tips. She cracks her neck and causes a flowing red cloak to appear around her shoulders. Ah, have you come to witness the reunion? She raises her hands, and the lights floating around the room begin become much more vibrant and begin flashing in a strobing pattern that's incredibly confusing. Roll initiative again! Yeah. Ah! I was gonna say, the moment Drex sees that and she says reunion, fire! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Those of you who are rolling on D&D Beyond don't need to tell me what you got because it automatically will add it to the tracker. Those of you who gotcha. aren't, though, uh, I'll ask you in a second. Well, I, and Ven and Flitz would recognize Malachar Thornburg, another member of the council. So, oh, first one's coin. That's the second one is dog uh, shit. Uh, oh, the bear, yeah. Nabbert. All right, what'd the bear get? Uh, the bear got. I, they both got nine, technically. Or no, ten. The bear got ten, damn it. So I rolled a nine again, and then okay. the bear gets plus one, so he got ten as well. Alright, so Flitz had an eleven. Ven, what'd you get? Twenty-one. Wow. Nice. And yeah, Anna. I rolled a twenty-one. Uh, rolled a tonight. <laughs> Alright. So, Ven, you're first. Oh, wait, hold on. Oh, boy. Hold on. Calm down. Okay. As I move you to the enchantment chamber. <laughs> it's so pretty, but Druck, so... put your token wherever you are on the ceiling. Yep. Probably uh, Well, he has been trying to keep a 30-foot gap between him and everyone else. Okay. Um, so I just moved him 30 feet in one right. direction. Well, Ven, um, you're up first. These colorful lights the last time. begin coalescing and flashing in the room. Mm-hmm. It's like you're in a rave, basically. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, I am going to... I want Flitz to get a kill. Come on, Flitz. <laughs> okay, I'm going to... Let's try it. Uh, I'm going to cast a... Well, what's the range on that? Sorry, one... Where am I? One, two, three, four, five... Okay. Um... One, two, three, four, four, four. Okay, I'm going to move up to here, and then I'm going to cast a Guardian of Faith right next to her. Roll D100. Yep. 23. Nice. <laughs> Seventh level spell. <laughs> Hell so yeah. intelligence save to see if you can actually do it. Yep, yep. DC 17, and I, oh, I moved away from coin. I don't have Correct. a plus one. All right. Well, that doesn't make a difference. 19. You cast a 7th level Guardian of Faith. Does that have an upcast? No, it does not. Okay, so it's the same. Yeah, so just <laughs> giant, giant, uh, remember, giant swaddled baby yep. with a sword, if I remember correctly, just yep. appears right <laughs> next to her. Yep. The symbol of Made things. of gold. Not as well, y'all just talking shit about babies that y'all had to fight. Y'all are <laughs> apparently <laughs> apparently the baby we had to fight is the baby on my holy symbols. So that I'm I'm trying not to think about that too much. <laughs> All right, so Ven, is that your turn? Yeah. All right, Druk. Uh, steady aim, sharpshooter. Go for All it. of the above. Or wizard, you you should you should get this. Yeah. You can do it, Druk. Yeah. Come on. Uh. Maybe not. <laughs> 13. 13 hits. 
Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. All right. Um. Okay. Let's do this first. Okay. All right. So. 15 piercing damage. Okay. Uh, and 15, uh, electric damage or lightning, lightning damage. So, okay. so 30 damage total. Sorry. Okay. And that's, oh wait, no, because of sharpshooter, uh, 40 damage total. Okay. So how much extra? Cause it adds 10. Uh, extra to put in now. Uh, okay. Cool. Yeah, and because I use steady aim, that's my entire turn. Alrighty. Okay. Alright. Alright. 40 damage. Bang. <laughs> Did you use the charge to cause the extra stuff, or no? I didn't. I probably should have, but I didn't cool. think of it. So. Alrighty. All right, the lights in the room start strobing incredibly intensely, and I need everybody in the room to make a uh, wisdom saving throw. Oh boy. Advantage. <laughs> no. We're close <laughs> enough to coin, we can do this. I was gonna say, if you can get to, if you're close to me. Yeah! What does that mean? What does being close to coin mean? Within 10 so feet. Am I an yeah. ally? Within 10 feet. Uh, sorry, <laughs> yeah. you get uh, plus one on uh, Saves. saving rolls. Uh, because I, I am paladin. Yeah. Because I, I don't have any charisma, so it's. Estes is no one oh, near. So. That's a twenty-one. I okay. almost rolled two Estes three. Estes fails. Right. So Ven, what'd you get? Uh, I got a. What did I get? Eleven. Plus. I was sixteen. Sixteen succeeds. Cool. Kenan, what'd you get? Twenty-six. Yeah, you're good. Coin, what'd you get? Uh, I got a. 16. You're fine. Dax, what'd you get? Natural 20 for a 22. You're fine. Druck, what'd you get? <laughs> Got a 6. You're under the effects of the confusion spell. Flitz, what'd oh, you no. get? <laughs> 21. 21, you're fine. So Estus and Druck are confused. No. We're going to put a pink light. Pink. We're going to say pink. Pink. Okay. Ah, no, fuck that. We're going to do this. All right, Druk and Estes are confused. Cool. All right, Dax. Uh, quick clarification: Am I still raging or no? Uh, no. Like... Okay, so away. like literally just okay. Yeah, you guys had a conversation, then you turned for trying yeah. to push into the room. Yeah. Three, three, forty. Get forty feet. We are going to, yeah, my. Why hmm. hmm. does? You know what? What do you think of that one, Justin? Oh wait, that's uh, too small. Bonus action Sorry. rage. Can I please get intelligence save? Yeah. That'd be really cool. All right. Uh, fourteen plus eight. I mean that that was a really good save. So Wizards, yeah. Make... This is what they but... do. This is what mm. they do, but it's worth the shot. Okay. Okay, so you bonus uh, action rage. Flicking out that long sword and going in to hit. You're too far for away. For a natural 20 for a 28. You're too far away to hit. Oh. God damn it. God damn it. I hate my life at the moment. I hate everything. I hate everything. That's okay. God damn I'm so it. sorry, Britt. Ah! Yeah, it's only five foot reach. That hurts my soul. Anything? <sighs> Big oof. No, I did my bonus action. I did my action. I did my movement. Yeah, that would have fucked. 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. Oh! Alright. No, I don't know. There's nothing I can do. Coin! So it would be uh, Nabbert, I think, first on the 10. 
Um, so yeah, I guess I'd ride up on the back of that. Uh, never goes after you. Oh, he goes after yeah, me? Yeah, in the tracker it says you have a 14 and never has a 10. Oh, I'm sorry. I, yeah, great. Uh, then, yeah, then, uh, I'm going to uh, ready in action. Uh, Wait. So are you still on Never? Are you getting off and going towards so-and-so? Because on the map, you're yeah. right in front of so-and-so. Oh, sorry. Whoops. My bad. My bad. Didn't see Never was on the field. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to ready in action uh, to... Oh, actually. Oh, wait. I need a wisdom saving throw from Never, actually. Oh, okay. Wisdom saving throw. Got you. D20. Rolling. Bear stats. Ooh. Oh, oh, that's a 15 because he's a plus one. I rolled a 13. He's a plus one plus the one from me. So that's a 15 total. Uh, Nebert is also confused. No! Ooh. And we lost Lex. What is uh, the confused condition? It's not a condition, it's just a spell. Movement. It does something at the start of their turn. Oh, okay. Great. Alright, uh, I'm... Alright, it's, right. it, so it's his turn right, then, right? It's still no, Coin's turn. Still I don't, coin's I don't turn, know what, I'm what going Coin's to up to. i use my uh, bonus action to... I also, don't, my whip. Do also, I also don't okay. see Coin on the map anymore. He's underneath Navert. Oh, okay. Uh, so, yeah, so, so 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Movement bonus action. Uh, whip sword for the reach. Okay. And then I'm going to hit this wizard with my whip sword. Go for it. Right on. Wizard, whip sword, here we go. Boom. So this is 27 to hit. That hits. All right. Uh, ooh. So that's 11 damage, and I'm going to smite this fool. All right. Roll, that's like, roll a D100. That's like a level. D100 is 77. Okay. No, I apologize. 70, 71. It said 77. Yeah, it's 77, but it also rolled 3d6 with it. Cause I oh, okay. 71. Uh, that'll be a 8th level Divine Smite. 8th level Divine Smite. All right. So I first make a level. Christmas save. First, see if you can actually do that. <laughs> DC right. 18. DC 18. Oh, on, boy. Coin. Here we go. That, ain't, that doggy ain't gonna hunt. Okay, so... Nine, so it's ten total. Alright, so the Divine Smite slot doesn't get used, and you don't actually cast Divine Smite, and instead you take... 14 Psychic Damage. And I need you to make a Concentration check for Magic Weapon. Okay. Alright, what, uh, Con, what do I need to hit? Uh, it would be... Whatever level you're trying to. Oh. Uh, constitution saving throw. Okay. Yeah, so it's 10. Yeah. 10. Oh. oh. Yeah, I ain't gonna do it either. Alright. 8. Magic weapon's gone too. Yeah, this has been a rough turn for me, but I'm gonna hit him again. Okay. Uh, and the original damage was just 11. Yep. On that first hit. Um, so it's 28 to hit. That definitely hits. Alright. Thirteen. Okay. Uh, is the damage right now. I'm also going to Divine Smite again. Alright, roll D100. Is it D100? Yeah. Seven, even. Uh, no change in spell potency, so it goes through. Alright. And it was three, right? Depending on what level we're casting it at? Two. 
So yeah, three. And this isn't a this isn't an undead person nope. being puppeted, is it? Okay. And then flits you're on deck. Little flits. We have four people or three people roll tens. Yeah. All right. <laughs> fourteen. Uh. So that's yeah. I yeah do fourteen damage. All right, they're looking real bad, and that'll bring us to flits. Twenty-seven. Um, he's going to move there to line himself up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sorry. Roll 20 was acting really weird because my internet went out because of the weather. So, going to line himself up with a shot on her, going to grab the two uh, fistfuls of air, and he's going to launch them at her. Eldritch Blast. The Eldritch Blast. Go for it. For the first one. That's not great. Oh, wait, that's a seven. Okay, that's not... That's a 15 to hit? 15 hits. Okay, so this is... Uh, seven plus three thunder damage. How does Flitz so, want to do this? Uh, I'm going to roll the second one okay. because I want to see how... If he actually hits. Okay, that's a 22. Because oh, yeah. these are... Yeah, they're going to be hitting at the same time. Uh, 10. So what is that? 20 total damage? Oh. Yeah. Both of them, one's going to launch up to, like, knock her in the air a bit mm -hmm. uh, as the second one follows in its trail and just smashes into her face. All right. The body of the tiefling explodes. Also, confusion ends on Druk, and everybody else who is confused. Uh, the body of the tiefling explodes in a dazzling array of colorful lights that twinkle like starlight throughout the chamber. And through this array of lights, a door is visible directly opposite of the one you came in from. The voices you heard from the previous chamber begin to sound out again, and once again you feel that they're thankful and see images of the people in the bubbles, and the voices say, Deny the reunion. That's the plan. But another door has appeared. <laughs> uh, does anyone need healing before we get into potentially another fight with a member of the council? Fen's nah, we great. Did. Dax is running towards the door. Cool, yeah, I'm following Dax and Druk. Uh, yeah, drug is, drug is leading the way like usual. All right. Yay, Flitz. And this time he's going to have oh, a yeah. finger on the trigger, so to Flitz speak. Flitz has entered. Flitz is on the kill count. <laughs> yeah, Flitz is on the kill count. Joined now. our kill count. There it is. All right. We've got some catching up to do, bud. So as we're, as we're running along, Flitz will let the others know that there will potentially be three more. Count some numbers. Yes. Three were dead. Three of them died. Two. Yes, sure. Wait, there was how many members total? Eight. Eight. Yeah. One of them had a smiley face. That's <laughs> what he remembers. That all. Uh, that all you recall was... the gnome you saw dead in front of a door. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then was a fur bog, and then the other was a mind flare. Um, yeah. Which you both, which but... the party found completely fucked up. He'll warn the others that there is a divination wizard, a necromancy wizard, and a wizard that is martial based. So, Blade Singer. All right. The next chamber <laughs> is covered in blinking eyes carved into the walls, floor, and ceiling. One of the eyes on the floor blinks, and as the eye opens, a dwarf with graying black hair and a graying braided beard that reaches down to his waist rises up out of it. Uh, he's wearing a thick red robe covered in embroidered patterns of golden eyes, under which is a set of half plate. His left eye is blue color and the left is and the right is green and a blinking eye of gold magic sits on his forehead. There's no stopping the reunion now. We're all ready for our ascension. Initiative. I'm gonna try D and D beyond see if I can roll any better. God oh. <laughs> That was a natural twenty for me. All right. Uh, let me build this encounter because I have to do it manually each time because this is dumb. <coughs> All right. So I'm gonna have to get y'all to shout at your initiatives at some so point <laughs> because uh, I wasn't in the tracker yet, so it's not gonna register. Okay. So give me one second as I add in Estes. 
It hasn't been doing much of anything, which is good. Let your players shine instead. And then who's this fuck? Tybalt. Tybalt. Oh. Sam's not here, so Flitz, you'd recognize this as Tybalt. Oh, Hello. Oh, I not didn't pop up on my overlay. That's weird. Uh, Ven and Buddy would recognize... Flitz, that's your name. I uh, would recognize <laughs> this as uh, Tybalt. Uh, t in fact, Tybalt Stormgrave, the one of the divination wizards on the council, or the divination wizard on the council. Uh, sorry, I'm still doing his stuff because he's a dwarf, and dwarves are cool. And he's wearing half plate. Mm. So unlike the other two, he actually might be a little harder to hit. Mm -hmm. We'll see. But he has a negative to his whatever. All right, I think that's everyone. S T is Tybalt. All right, cool. Coin, what'd you get for initiative? Uh, both Nabbert and Coin, they both got 14. Okay, so we'll just share initiative I'm... then. Druk! Eight. Okay. Oof. Kenna. 21, natural 20. Nice. Yes. Dax. 18, baby! Ven. Eight. Just excited to hit something this fight. Flitz. Yeah. Uh, got 13. <laughs> All right. First up is Kenna. Cool. <clears throat> um, I am going to, uh, just want to, want to double check that I'm thinking of the right thing. Da -da. What is the range on this thing? Flitz now has as many kills as Dawn did. Um. <laughs> cool. I'm going to move up within 30 feet, which I believe is around there. Mm -hmm. Um, and I need this guy to make a wisdom saving throw. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna have Ven and Flitz make Arcana checks first. Well, just in general, but yeah. A natural to... 20. Nice. For a 29. Whoa. 22. Wow, nice. uh, the both of you would recognize the eye on the forehead is the foresight spell. Mm-hmm. Mm. Um, oh, yeah. God. That's a high level. That's a big one. Uh, disadvantage uh, wisdom throw for the uh, spell uh, smell effect on the crystal as they get into range. Uh, straight roll because of foresight. Okay. And you said wisdom? Yeah. That is a 19. Damn it. Damn. Okay. Uh, that just saves. And then action, uh, Toll the Dead. Another wisdom saving throw at disadvantage. Okay. 14. That uh, fails. Uh, I don't, I'm not, a, I'm assuming he's not injured at all nope. yet. Okay, so that's just 2d8. Sick. That is 12 necrotic damage. Nice. Um, and bonus action, uh, Guardian of Nature, fourth level. Okay. Uh, f 94. Oh, right. Uh, yeah. tenth level. So I need Shit. a, uh, charisma, wisdom saving throw. At advantage. Mm-hmm. Uh, 17 plus 9. Oh, yeah. So you guys have 10th level Guardian of Nature. Yeah. Uh, tree form. Uh, I'm gonna take one more step forward so that, uh, between me and him is 15 foot radius of difficult terrain. Um, I also gain 10 temporary hit points. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that is my turn. All right. Dax. Sensibly rushed into the next room, and I still be raging. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five. And also, space in front of between Keta and this dwarf dude is uh, only for him. Oh, only for him. Cool. Never mind. Yeah, I can designate who it's for. Cool. Thirty-five, forty. If I go diagonal. And... There, you get over right beside this dwarf. Longsword was never sheathed. We were just going in and swish cheese. Let's do this. All right, and magic weapon Hopefully. is no longer on it, so. 
does a nine hit? A nine does not. <sighs> it's like his. Oh wait. Uh, the attack roll has disadvantage because of foresight. Let's roll again. I can't do worse than that you... one. Oh, yeah. He just. <laughs> it's it's he's <laughs> not <laughs> when he moves. He's not controlling his body. You see his him just go like, like lean forward. Like he's just like something's puppeting him. Jack's just like, ah, uh, uh, they're going to go reckless. Okay, so straight roll for the second one. Roll. 26. That hits. Fuck this bitch. Uh, that's going to be 11 damage. Nice. All right, anything else? Just uh, staring him down, putting the... Fear of whatever god he might believe in into him. That'll bring us to Estes with coin on deck. Yeah. Uh, Alright, Estes is gonna run in. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. He's gonna dash right up in his grill. Coin. So uh so coin is going to uh Cast bonus action hunter's mark. All right, roll d100. Rolling a d100. And then Flitz is on deck. All right, so that is 52. Uh, that's a six level hunter's mark, so wisdom save or charisma save, DC 16. DC 16. All right, so that is a 22. All right, you cast Hunter's Mark at sixth level, which just increases the duration. Okay, doesn't increase the damage. Nice. Nope. Right on. Cool. So Hunter's Mark is cast on this fool, uh, and then uh, as my bonus action, then I'm going to hold my attack action uh, for when I get within range. Sounds good. And then it would be Nabbert's turn. I'm rolling Nabbert. I'm gonna ride Nabbert's back right up to right. right into this full space. I just have Nabbert set behind you just so he's not in in the way. Right. So he's not on top of people. Yeah. So I'm gonna yeah, he can get forty, so I'm gonna just All right. go right up there and then I'm gonna yeah, do my one attack with Yep. Oh uh, your held I can it. do Nabbert's attacks. Yeah, you can do Nabbert's attacks and then you can do your held attack. Alright, so Nabbert's attacks have disadvantage. Okay, uh, and yours better. will be straight rolls because of pack tactics. Right. So this is the this is the disadvantage. I'm just going to roll two, two dice. Uh, this disadvantage on the first attack. So that's uh, 15 plus 6, 21. That hits. On the bite attack. All right. That's back to 8 plus 4. That's 12 on the okay. bite, and then this is disadvantage on this claw on the claw attacks. So uh, does an 11 hit? 11 does not. 11 does not. Okay. Uh, so they misses on the claw attacks. And now okay. it's uh, the way, like the way he's getting puppeted. He does a backflip to avoid the claws. That's fantastic. I love that. Flip wizard. Uh, and I'm doing. Just a regular attack. Ooh, straight roll. 13. 13 misses. Ooh. It's rare for coin to miss. He is he does not like it. No. <laughs> Alright. Uh, anything else? No, that's all. I mean, because that right. was my uh, held yep. action. That's right. And then Oh yeah, right, uh, yeah, I forgot. It wasn't your turn. Uh, uh flitz, there. tumble pots. Okay. Uh he doesn't like everybody getting in the way. I mean he doesn't care actually. I'll do what y'all need to. Um, and he will move 10, 15, 20 to get there, mm -hmm. to get that nice little angle between Dax and this big dragonborn mm -hmm. dude. Yeah. Um, and again, as he's running, he's scooping the air, gathering it up. As he shifts, he'll just throw the two Eldritch Blasts. And those are going to be at disadvantage because of foresight. <sighs> Yes, that's a natural one, so that makes a lot of fucking sense. <laughs> Watch out! No, oh, it's not that you're, like, fucking off. It's like he can sense the attack coming. He just, like, moves his head to the side. God damn. Oof. That's a 12 for the second? That also misses. 
Um, all right, that is going to be uh, it's going to be my go. All right, it's going to bring us to, now. to Dwarf Daddy, and uh, oh, I didn't give him any damaging spells. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> Divination Wizard. Uh, he's going to pull out his battle axe. <laughs> Oh, I thought he was just going to punch me. Oh, I fucked this up so bad. Uh, <laughs> he's going to blow out a battle axe. He's going to swing it at the bear. No! How dare you. You come from my baby bear boy. Sentinel? Yeah, go for it. Disadvantage? Disadvantage, yeah. At disadvantage of 26. Oh, yeah, that hits. Hell yeah. That's gonna be 13 damage. Okay. Dax is just like, no one's killing coins, pet. Well. Well. Alright. <laughs> I mean, he is a being. You're not allowed. Battle axe. 12 to hit. Uh, 12 does hit. Alright. Natural armor of 11, so. Sweet. So that's a d10 minus 1 for 5 slashing damage. Okay. <laughs> Oh, uh, mm-hmm. two weapons. Oh no, he's holding. He's two handing it. Uh, All of a sudden, shit got real, guys. <laughs> well, that's his turn, Druk. For uh, to give any damaging spells, st- all divination spells. Yeah, steady aim so that yeah. I can get a flat roll. Yeah. Um. Uh, yeah. Um, and you know, I because I'm on that kick, and I like to feel my own pain. mental anguish and pain, yeah. it's also going to be sharpshooter. All right. So minus five to whatever this is. Yep. He's wearing half plate. Natural one. <laughs> <laughs> How many nat ones have we done with this guy? It's hilarious. All right. Anything else? Had like, oh, no. Oh, my God. You any, oh, no. Action. Bonus action because he did steady aim. All right. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's it. All That's right. the turn. Oh, no. Rep Ven. All right. Ven's uh, Ven's gonna. Ven's gotten a fun idea for this guy that he thinks is gonna work, but in order to make it so it does, I've got to get creative. So what I'm gonna do here? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, six. I didn't roll okay, importance so. for the day. By the way, oh. I don't. I, I. I don't mean to interrupt, but this is fucking amazing that this guy, this <laughs> wizard, is just like going, oh, oh. Yeah, he's surviving like the dodging loop. everything. <laughs> like Druk is just like. It reminds me, Justin, did you ever see the movie Stardust? (laughs) No. Uh, There's a great part at the end where uh, someone's corpse is being puppeted by a witch. and It's great because he's like floating around, his head is hanging, but his arms like swing his sword like in a direction he's not even facing. That's basically what's happening here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, So I'm going to run, here's what's happening. I'm going to run up to here. And as I do, I'm going to basically like turn, like as I'm coming up, I'm going to crouch down, turn over backwards. The last five feet of my motion are me sliding on my back, Mm -hmm. basically right up in front of him. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go prone Mm -hmm. so that uh, I can blast a cone of rhymes binding ice straight up to only hit him. Okay. So I can avoid everybody else. So it just goes up on a giant plume of ice. Okay, roll D100. Yep. 79. That is a 8th level of Rhymes Binding Ice. Woo! Okay, and I'm within 10 feet of coin. Yep, so Intelligence right. Save DC 18. 18, yep. Plus 10, plus 10. Come on, come on. Oh no, 15! The spell does not go, go off. Oh boy. And instead you take 16 Psychic Damage. No! Oh, that didn't work. Oh. That would have been really cool. It would have, but it didn't. <laughs> oh well. Do you feel like the spell getting a surge, and then it just poof, fizzles out? It's like I imagine. I imagine it's like I'm holding. I'm trying to hold on to it, but the power yeah. grows too much, and I just can't yeah, like just hang on. Pop, it just fizzles out. Yeah. Yep. So you said with how much? Sorry, sixteen. Sixteen. Okay. So I take fourteen after the temp HP. Mm-hmm. So there we go. Ouch. Um, do I have a chance to, since the spell didn't, go, okay, here's a question. Yeah. Since the spell didn't go, does that count as me still casting a yes. spell for the purpose of the bonus action thing? Okay. Yeah. And that's my turn. All right. I'm prone next to him. <laughs> All right. That would have been really cool otherwise, but you great. know, you gotta, uh, you gotta risk it. Kenna. Cool. 
um, third level Wither and Bloom at him. Mm-hmm. Uh, Constitution saving throw, please. All right. Oh, he's a dwarf, and they're good at those. And, uh... All right. So, with advantage because of foresight. Mm-hmm. But a straight roll because you're using the crystal, right? Uh, it's only for only wisdom saves are at disadvantage. Okay, yeah, so this would be a straight roll. Oh wait, con save you said? Uh, yeah, it's a Constitution saving throw for this spell. <sighs> I already rolled, so I fucked up and can't use a portent. Um, that's a eight. That fails. Yeah. <clears throat> so that's three d six necrotic damage. Yep. No, four d six. Yep. Wait, did you cast the roll to d one hundred? Oh, I didn't. Yeah, do that first. Yeah. D100. No! My die escaped me. Uh, 38. So that would be fourth level. Shit. Do you have a fourth level spell slot? I do. I have Take it my off. last one. Take it off. Yeah, my last one. Uh, I'm going to reroll damage for the 46. Yeah, go for it. Um, That is 18 necrotic damage. All right. Um, Are you healing anybody? Uh, yeah, everyone within 10 feet of this guy can uh, roll three hit dice plus and add that roll plus six to their hit points if they are do we, down. Do we use up the hit dice? Yes. Or? Yeah. Okay. You, use, uh, three, you can use up to three hit dice plus six. Oh, so your own hit dice. Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. And they do get I'm used gonna, up when you use this. I'm going to do all three of those plus six. I'm rolling three. Is there a way to do that other than using the short? Yeah. So I got a to- I got twelve. So coin gets twelve hit points back. And can um can Nor uh Nibber uh Nibbert? get like oh. get like a plus one plus six for yeah, this sure. since he doesn't technically have hit dice. Oh, so monster like creatures do have hit dice. Oh. What are uh, what I said? Never was a black bear. Yes, not a brown bear. Brown bear, I believe. Did I say brown bear? Uh, at least I have the stats of a brown bear. Hold on. Okay, cool. We'll say I just said. I think I said a brown bear. Uh, yeah. So Nabbert's hit dice are d10. So roll a d10 and uh, plus six. Yeah. Oh, I rolled d6s. My hit dice are a ten. So yeah, you're ten, 10 you're, plus you're, six. Yeah. Shit. Okay, so ten plus six. Ven is the only one I believe. Well, and Flit sort of have d6 hit dice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, so Nabbert gets nine back. There we go. Which puts Nabbert back up to full at 40. All right, anything and else, Kenna? Then... Um, no, that is all. All right, Great. that'll bring us to Dax. We are we're posted up there still. Might as well. I'm just going to go reckless again. All right, straight rolls then. So it's a straight roll at least. Eleven. Misses. The body just <laughs> does it the matrix like bend back. <clears throat> nice. <laughs> uh second one going reckless as well. Mm-hmm. There we go. Twenty four. That hits. He, as he comes up from the matrix dive. <laughs> uh thirteen damage. Alrighty, this dwarf is looking like absolute dog shit. Yay! Anything else? Um, no, just still staring him down, just giving him like a real side eye for tro- for All like right. fucking with Coins Bear. Uh, Estes is gonna swing his plus two Warhammer twice. Thirteen on the first one. Because <laughs> of foresight, it's really causing a number here. 18 on the second. And that is one-handed because... One hand. Uh, Mm -hmm. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. 14 damage. Just caves this dude's head in. Nice. And uh, he's like, Oh, I haven't... Oh, oh. (laughs) Um, Welcome to the Kill Count Club, Your Highness. The magical eye on the... I've killed a few things before. I used to be in the army. Anyways, uh, the magical eye on the dwarf's head opens wide as if surprised, but continues to open, 
while the mm. dwarf screams as his entire body is sucked, seemingly sucked into the pupil of the magical eye before the eye itself fades from existence. And the voices sound out again, the reassured voices of the people from the city, and they say, The ascension must not come to pass, the reunion must fail. And a door forms on the opposite wall, just like the previous chambers. Running through. Running! All right. I'm going to move uh, my hunter's mark uh, along with us. Okay. Just okay. Smart. Holding concentration on it. Yep. All right. Cool. Uh, so, the walls of this chamber are filled with small alcoves where black silk flap. But black silk flaps in an invisible breeze. The room has a lantern filled with green light hanging from the ceiling. There's a slight breeze, and one of the silk sheets in one of the alcoves flaps to the side, and from behind which, a six-foot-four, pale-skinned woman with a, sh with a shaved head on the sides and a sort of midnight blue-colored mohawk with tips dyed red steps out from the wall and cracks her neck. Uh, Ven and Flitz would recognize Luna Rowan, the necromancy member of the council. Her lower lip is pierced with a platinum ring, and she's wearing a black lace gown beneath a black corset. Over top of the outfit is a long, flowing black cashmere coat, and her fingernails are painted burnt orange. The eternal night comes. You have failed. Initiative again! Whee! Fuck! <laughs> 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 Why? <laughs> Bro, these are these are ability checks too. So if you you know oh. want to roll a d4 and use oh. up some of them charges, you sure can. Oh, can I use all three on one? No, no, no. It's a d4. <laughs> no. I mean, here I'll roll a one. So that's a seven instead of Yay. a six. So <laughs> I that's forget dude. Charges. Dude, are rogues ones that get half proficiency on everything? No, that's bards. bards. That's bards. Yeah, because initiative checks count. Dear yeah. God, my initiative rolls have been garbage. Eh, it makes never. sense though. At least you're only I fighting wizards. Yeah. Oh. Wizard only fighting wizards. Like that could be real rough. Depending. By themselves though. Yeah, we're soloing with like we're taking on solo wizards, so we're we're carving through them pretty quickly. But next up is I Ven. Gotta... Ven's the one you're fighting next. <laughs> oh shit. Well. My moral compass won't let me attack Ven, so sorry, guys. Yeah, later. All right. Sorry. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> I started I... blasted. Oh, it's no, like I it's, a, it's a whole. It's Everybody's a whole... like pauses, and then Flitz is like, "What are y'all doing?" It's a it's a <laughs> meme. It's a meme of like, "Guess I'll die." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. uh, we all know what Ven can do with a tidal waiver too. So. And what a tidal wave can do to Ven. Yikes. <laughs> Frozen tidal wave. All right. Oh, I hate that I have to make. Hey now. Hey now. Yeah. This is what dreams are made of. Oh wow, different. <laughs> Completely <laughs> different. Yep, yep. <laughs> Completely <laughs> different direction there. All right. What did the bear, what did the bear get for initiative? The bear got eighteen for initiative. Okay, cool. And coin rolled a hot, hot six. Oh, Druk, what'd you get? Seven. Oh man, Kenna. Four. Oh, Dax. Fourteen. Ven. Twelve. Twelve. Flitz. I do. All right, and I assume as soon as you see this lady pop out, coin throws Hunter's mark onto them. Uh, yeah, that's the one they're gonna get. That. All right, cool. I'll switch you guys so over it's... to the necromancy <laughs> chamber. Oh Wait, my, no! My uh, <laughs> token carried over. Did it? Yeah, it did. You're you're squeezing yeah, the corner. Yeah. I have two. No, no, oh no! It looks like I have two on my screen. Sorry. Yeah. All um, right, Flitz, you are immediately up first. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, he's going to squeeze past. Uh, Dax. Pardon me. Excuse me. Thank you. The big Pardon scary me. lady. Mm -hmm. Um, and oh, he does not like her his least favorite uh oh, yeah. you watch as he moves past and he stands here and you watch the one of the pouches that he has he tosses it up in the air and he says hey luna catch and he'll cast catapult as he just right. hums it Roll D100. right at her 
Ooh, oh, yeah, D100. No. This one could be nasty. Oh, no. Uh, 45. Uh, cast for a fifth level spell. So I need you to make a charisma saving throw. Plus, oh. plus one. Um, is Okay, so sorry. Is this considered like a magical effect? Yeah. Okay, so I have advantage on these. Yeah, okay. plus one, plus, yeah. So Christmas saving throw, plus one with advantage. 25. Oh, yeah, you cast oh, a fifth 20, level. Oh, sorry, oh. 26. Yeah, <laughs> so that's a, that's a fifth level catapult. Oh, fuck. Um, I think there's a save. So to after, oh, shit. Okay, using spell slot of second or higher. So it increases by 1d8 for each slash above first. So it's cast at second. It's casting at a second, so that's... 48 and then 5d8, 68, 78? Yeah. yeah. Yep. And it's catapulted. Oh, <laughs> I'm going to roll the first. My first couple rolls are going to be. I'm just going to do it as crit because that's. Uh, okay. That also tracked the last uh, one. Cause it's, or I'll add one. If the object would strike a creature, the creature must make a deck save. Deck save, yeah. So it could not be great. but So Luna needs to make a deck save. 38. Bludgeoning damage. Right. She doesn't. Dex save twelve. Okay, my dex is a DC sixteen, so she takes thirty-eight bludgeoning From damage a as a pouch. bag. You watch as the pouch that he threw flies through the air and hits her, and as it does, it just almost like a shrapnel explodes in a bunch of ball bearings. About a hundred ball bearings just explode, <laughs> and you watch as he grabs another one and he gets it ready. Um, so that is that's gonna be. He's not gonna say right there. I need to see where I am on the map. God, that's, that's fucking right. badass. <laughs> he just he'll, got fucking. He'll go that way. Uh, she he'll scurry around. Uh, she also has a cloak on her back. Looks like it's like lava that's like moving. Oh, Anyways, oh my god! All right, so that's Flitz's go. Oh, Flitz is going. Oh, how yeah. tall are these little thingies? Actually, speaking of that, how tall are those little? Uh, uh they rise to the ceiling. Like two, to the ceiling. Okay, never mind. And there's like black curtains in each of them. Okay, he'll all go right. there though. Okay, cool. You all hear moaning coming from the alcove. It's like, <laughs> like that. And how many pop out? Oh no. Three. Fuck. You all see three zombies kind of just like coalesce behind the curtains as they like move in the wind. Just zombies. Yes. Three per uh, alcove? No, three total. Oh. <laughs> um. <laughs> zombies are easy. All right. So that's initiative count twenty. What are the zombies' initiative? Real fucking bad. Four minus two. Hey, I go before the zombies! <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Alright, so zombie. Zombie. Oh no, Flitz. There's a zombie what's, right behind you. What's the CR of a zombie? You don't know. <laughs> Uh, but what if I want to use a, a thing? One quarter. Okay. Cool. Uh, Estes is like, what the f... <laughs> and he's just going to like... 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, dash. He's going to run towards the zombie. That just coalesced. He's like, you guys can handle the wizards, it looks like. Uh, that brings us to Nabbert. Oh, I don't have Nabbert. Uh, yeah, that... Uh, the... The... The bear, you know you love him. He's gonna run up and do that same thing. Get forty feet uh, coin on his back. Run right up and take a bite and uh, and scrape. All right. All right. So the bite. He's gonna roll. This result plus a six, so twenty-one. Yeah. And then that bite with those beautiful platinum chompers going to be uh, uh, 5 total. It's D8 plus 4. So that's 5 total. And mm -hmm. then the claws are going to come at him. Roll against the Necromancer. Alright, that is a 9 to hit. 9 misses. Alright. 
that's it. That's all for Navrick's turn. That was the move. In all the... right. And they coined to put Hunter's Mark on them. Dax. Thirty-five, forty. Squish cheese with a long sword. Okay. And I'm assuming I'm still raging because we just ran in here. We'll say you've got like three rounds left of rage. Twenty-two. Twenty-two hits. Just carving through these wizards in like less than a minute. 13 damage. Yeah. And then the second attack. Mm hmm. Uh, flirty 20. That hits. Yeah. Uh, 8 damage. Okay. Man, she looking bad. Dax is just holding that longsword, looking at Coin, and just giving like that, like, knowing nod towards him. And that's their turn. Ven Kihalis. Hmm. You know, uh, after taking that psychic damage, I think I'm just gonna, for now, especially because we seem to be doing pretty good against the wizards, I'm not gonna risk it too much. So, can I actually, can I hit past the bear? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I can. Yeah. Okay. Then I'm just gonna firebolt. Go for it. No, uh, no, no D100. Nope. That is a 26. That hits. All right. All right. 14 points of fire damage. How do you want to do this? Hey. Yay. Uh, so if I remember correctly, yeah. So Ven has to cast through a book. Uh, so I imagine, I imagine, actually, I, I, we never actually talked about this, but I imagine when Ben uses the book as a focus, he doesn't just, like, point with it. I imagine yeah, this no. is, we're, we're going full wizard with it. He, like, puts it in his hand, and, like, the pages flare open. Hell yeah. And, like, the the spell inscribed, spells inscribed inside it would glow with a corresponding color. So there's an orange glow, comes off the fluttering pages, and there's a bolt of fire shoots out of the, out of the pages and just hits her just square in the face. <laughs> All right. She screams, and you watch as hundreds of undead begin partially crawling out of the floor before pulling this necromancer woman through the floor and out of sight. The zombies in the alcoves disappear, and a door then forms on the wall opposite of the one you entered from. The voice returns, a slight panic to their tone. The iris lies beyond. Stop him. Sprinting through. Mm-hmm. Uh, Flitz is going to summon his mage hand and gather up as many ball bearings as he can as he's running. Okay, <laughs> moving. Down, he's gonna grab night. some as a as the mage hand is grabbing a few others. Okay. You get like how many? How many were in the pouch? There's a hundred per pouch. Yeah, so you can get all hundred. Oh, cool. He just needs to get a new pouch. Uh, okay. The room beyond is massive, and in the center is a fifty foot radius golden sphere that resembles a large eye and hums with a loud intensity which seems to be sputtering slightly like as it's yeah like a car engine's like you know uh if futes if, if futes it floats a few feet above the floor and is currently surrounded by a glimmering orange dome of force standing inside the dome of energy you see calix lorne the headmaster of the soulspire academy and a black dragonborn with a heavily scarred torso and head their left eye is missing, and they wear an eye patch. Uh, Ven and Flitz would recognize Ventress Alakar, the blade singer. Uh, their arms are wrapped in blood red bandages, and they're wearing a high collared, billowing set of vibrant orange robes. On their left hand is a hook, and their right hand is wearing a gauntlet made of black iron. Uh, outside the dome is a 45 foot tall construct made of a combination of crystal and green, tin green tinged metal. Its left arm ends in a horrific looking barbed hook while the other ends in a massive hand that shimmers with numerous colors. In the center of this construct chest is a cavity where a sphere of annihilation resides, and a dome of force keeps it enclosed. Inside the dome of force, you recognize the conscious forms of both Joseph and Ogden Boone, banging on the dome, looking severely wounded, but unable to get out. With Joseph, How close are they to the sphere of annihilation? It looks like it's like a slow process to do it. Oh. 
uh, with Joseph looking far worse out of the pair of them. The construct isn't moving, and it looks like it's been killed, but the Street of Annihilation is still, like, doing its stuff. You're alive just as Calyx pulls his arms out of the sphere in a weird puppet-like motion, kind of like how a marionette moves. He turns to you all, you can see a flurry of colors, each from the School of Magic, glimmering in his veins. As he removed his arm from the sphere, it stops making noise. And those of you with arcane, divine, druidic magic feel that connection slightly just weaken. Oh, that's a shame. I didn't expect you all to come after me. That's disappointing. And he looks at Flitz and goes, You got out. Wow. He places a hand on the Dragonborn's shoulders, and with a glimmer you watch as the Dragonborn turns to dust. <sighs> he produces four keystones, identical to the ones you have, and places them beneath the sphere and opens a passageway beneath it. He makes his way about halfway down, turns to you all, and says, Follow me if you survive. The reunion is at hand. And he points a hand to the construct, and it just completely collapses. The dome break, the dome of force shatters. Uh, Ogden and Joseph fall out of it, and the sphere of annihilation just kind of goes and starts to swell in size a little bit. Uh, and Calyx descends down the passageway beneath the spire, or beneath the sphere, and the dome of force disappears. <clears throat> All right, so we can go. The, dome, the sphere of annihilation is getting bigger and bigger. Yes. So Ogden and Joseph we'll are free. And Joseph's, right? Joseph's going to say, because you're not getting a 20th level wizard with you, because <laughs> that would be Aww. fucking <laughs> OP. Mm -hmm. uh, Joseph uh, is going to say, uh, the headmaster absorbed the weave. Uh, kill him and take it from him. You know what to do, right? Imbue the world with it. Kind of deal? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. We were told, yes. Uh, Ogden and I actually have our own people down here to take care of. Right, Ogden? Like, Grump and everything's, everyone's fine? Yeah, they're, they're all alive. Uh, they're, uh, back down the tunnel a ways to the right. Uh, he gives each of you a potion of superior healing. Superior mm. healing. Uh, and he hands Essence another vial. Um, wh where exactly are they? Like, like, the left, left, right, left, left, right, left. <laughs> go straight back. Just go straight back until you get to the intersection and keep going across All right. uh, to the one straight across okay. from you, and then keep going. Uh, Ogden, I'll meet you up there, or do you want to go together? And looks at Ogden. Okay, the Ogden can respond however Ogden wants to. Oh yeah, yeah. Let's uh, beat feet and uh, let's um, yeah, keep it moving, everyone. Yes, uh, good work to you. I've um, seen. That this works out for you, uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, let the, all right. Let's let's go, Joseph. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Let's I get... love the idea of like Ogden, like completely, like uh, exhausted all of his resources, mm -hmm. and he's just like hail mary passing. Doesn't act, and he's just bullshitting, and it's just like, you guys will be great. I've foreseen it. <laughs> uh... I had faith in you. Yeah, it looks like Ogden and Joseph use a lot of their resources to fight this construct thing. Uh, Joseph grabs Ogden by the, by the elbow and just says, Let's get the fuck out of here. I miss being on a ship. And the pair of them, dimension doorway, leaving you all here with your potions of superior healing, and the headmaster just went down the stairs underneath what you presume is the iris. Uh, I'm going straight after him. Okay. Mm-hmm. Let's yeah, fucking go. All of us, yeah. Everybody going? Coin riding the bear down? <laughs> oh, yes, absolutely. To okay, Valhalla, cool. bitches! Um, as we're um, running, I'm going to ask everyone, does anyone need healing? <laughs> Are we nope. all good? A little, fine, bit, yeah. a little bit, a little bit. Just a little, just, just a little, just a taste. Just Can a little. I, all right. Well, I'm, if it's if it's going to cost a spell slot. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And also, I could give a. I forgot I had this and uh, pull out the dragon vessel of uh, stirring. Mm -hmm. And I pull out a potion of healing, and it's a greater potion of healing. Yep. As a bonus action. Yep. So I can just. Yep. Okay. Toss that. 
drink this to, uh, uh, prost. <laughs> All right, potion of greater healing, which is something. Uh, uh, I, I, I'll look that up. I think it's 48 plus four. Yeah, that's right. I think so. It is 44 plus four. 44 plus four. All right, so you quickly chug in this potion as you run down the steps following the headmaster? Sure, I'm going to trust explicitly that I'm not going <laughs> to drink poison. <laughs> okay. Uh-huh. It's a healing potion. Headmaster, we've poisoned yours. It's, it's a healing uh, potion. Nine plus four. Okay, that was more than what I needed. All right. I mean, you went through worse shit on your sending. It's fine drinking a little yeah, poison. Yeah, your sending was a healing <laughs> As you descend the steps and make your way below the iris, you can see the headmaster is ahead. His movements appear haggard, and you can see bits of his body crumbling away behind him and falling to the floor in the corridor before they turn to dust. He passes through a dome of four city conjures and produces something from his robes and places it in an archway he's standing in front of. As he does, you see a swirling vortex of shadow appear in the archway. He turns back to you all, and you can see portions of his skull now as flecks of his face just fall away. I hope you'll join me, and his voice changes, for the reunion. And you watch as Rowan Buxton steps out of the headmaster, who collapses to the ground, and you can see the same arcane energy coursing through Rowan. Basically, Flit's a handsome vampire dude with a skull mask. Who was possessing the headmaster? Uh, He bows and steps backwards through the archway and disappears. The Dome of Force then blinks out of existence. And you can see the Headmaster about 30 feet down the corridor, struggling to lift his head to look at you all. As he's just slowly crumbling to pieces. Um, first level healing word. Uh, he, or is he, it too late? He, he, it's definitely too late. Okay, never mind. Uh, I'm so sorry. After you brought me to the prison, this presence, it wouldn't leave me, it... He turns to Flitz. I'm so sorry you got thrown into this, the presence was too strong for me to fight. It's okay, you're forgiven. And he crumbles to dust. Nothing remains, not even his belongings. He'll just grab a little handful of the dust and put it in his pocket. Okay. There's only the archway beyond, and the city shakes violently. Almost something terrible has occurred. The passage you used to get down here vanishes. Like it closes. Those of you connected to the weave suddenly feel as if your connection no longer remains. But the voices speak out. Your connection persists on the other side, and the reunion, else this world be consumed. Uh, I'm gonna... I'm gonna go through, yeah. Okay, you go through. Yeah. We'll yeah. All step through the, the the archway of shadow. Mm-hmm. Hell yeah! All right. That kind of like visibly shaken by the absence of their magic. They're okay. Like, oh, I had a plan to get through this. Shit, I can't do that all plan. Right. As yeah. each of you step now? through the archway, you feel an overwhelming sensation of dread and unease. You feel your connection to the weave get restored. <laughs> But you don't feel the city's powers, like the surging of magic anymore. That Mm. is not happening here. Everything grows horrifically cold. And you step out onto jagged black rock with chunks of debris of this floating rock floating all around. The place is lit, but not by torch, (laughs) lantern, or magic. This place is lit. It's lit by starlight. And -hmm. as you gaze upwards, you see stars as far as the eye can see. And a massive ball of burning light in the distance the sun those of you that glance backwards you see the archway but behind the archway the void of space and far beyond you see the world of del nasra illuminating the sky you're on the moon inside what appears to be the remains of a crumbling city built into its surface towers and other pieces of it floating through the sky massive craters also pockmark the surface of this place there's gravity here, so you're not floating away, but for some reason the debris of the city floats. And as soon as you arrive, you notice humanoid-like figures roaming the streets of the city. They seem to resemble the figures sealed in the bubbles of this of Cathatuine, but these people appear to be made entirely of shadow or some other form of matter. While other figures you see resemble humanoid types you're familiar with, like gnomes, halflings, humans, dwarves, tieflings, etc. 
A few of these figures that are nearby turn their heads slowly at your sudden arrival and all whisper in unison like an awful cacophony in the familiar voice of Shiadan and it says, The reunion is at hand. Join us. And that's where we're going to end the session for the week with everyone leveling up to level nine. Because we got, get you got to the moon. Do we get to we get so for the new spells we get? If they need to be done during a long rest, no. Oh wait, but it doesn't matter for me because they'll be in my spell book. Correct. I don't have to prepare spells Correct. anymore. What if Dang. you just need to <coughs> fill up your prepared spells? <sighs> Not one on my thing. Oh no. Cool. We roll ones. We roll so okay. first, Ven, we're going to do it in some order because people like to see what they get for hit points. Ven, go first. All right. Roll your d6. All right. Four. Cool. Kenna. Plus two. All right. D8. Six. Nice. Coin. Uh, D10. Yep. Oof, a doof. That's a two. That's the lowest one I've oh, rolled all campaign. Roll. Uh, Dax. Yeah. Well, baby! Nice. 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 Druck. Well, the first one was a nat one, so here we go. Let's try this again. It's a D8. Uh, another nat one. Go again. Okay. <sighs> All right. Uh, eight! There we go. <laughs> uh, Flitz, Ooh. are you going to level, level in Warlock or level in Sorcerer? He's going to go Warlock. All right, D8. <laughs> An 8. Nice. Nice. All right, as you Oof. all arrive on the moon for the reunion at hand, that's where we're going to end the session for the week. So thanks for watching, everybody. Welcome, Ooh. Lex, to the Nightmare Gang. Uh, yeah. The moon fight. Um, <laughs> good night, everybody.